few cut time. So uh, I think our next uh, presenter will uh, is preparing his uh, new slide. So anyway, uh, Melissa, is there any last word before we ending ending the session? Yeah. You know, just thank you. Thank you for everything that you guys do. Thank you to everybody that's watching. Thank you for your support uh, as volunteers, as contributor, project contributors, as financial contributors. It is all very necessary and very appreciated. So thank you very much. And if there's anything that I can do, uh, I put my email in the chat. And if you want to do something for me, you do the survey and you can uh, share and retweet uh, when we start going into um, uh, you know, giving giving Tuesday and, and their contributions. So thank you and have a great rest of the conference. All right. Okay. Uh, thanks, Melissa. So uh, guys, please uh, do the service as Melissa requested. Uh, and while we are waiting for Ramada, uh, Mr. Rabadani uh, to prepare his flight. So I guess as that, so you will be going to, t uh, to track two, right? <laughs> yeah. So for track one, we will be uh, talk on next level depth of implementation with GitOps, uh, presented by our presenter here, uh, Ramadani. Ramadani. So, uh, Mr. Ramadani, are, are you there? Okay. All right. So, all right. So, uh, I think I, I guess uh, you are free to talk and also if uh, you guys interested in uh, uh, on certain uh, on certain uh, in community uh, for the first project you can uh, you can go forward to track two which is currently should be running as same as this session so mr ramadoni i think you are you can take it away okay uh, thank you uh, Everybody can see my screen? Yes. Okay, okay. Let, let me start. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, I'm really glad to be here today. Uh, first of all, I would like to say thank you to Genome Asia Summit team for the great opportunity to talk. My topic is around uh, GitOps, yeah? Uh, next level DevOps implementation with GitHub. I hope you will find it useful. Okay, then. Uh, Yeah, uh, this is a little bit uh, about uh, about me. Uh, I'm uh, Ramadoni. Currently, I'm working as IT Infra and Cloud Automation at Commonwealth Bank Indonesia. And I'm also a student of Mag Magister Informatic Engineering at Universitas Amikom Yogyakarta. If you have any opportunity to traveling or vacation to Jakarta and Yogyakarta, uh, yes, we can meet up and grab a cup of coffee then. Yeah, this is uh, this is our agenda. Start uh, with talk about DevOps a little bit, and then we talk about GitOps. And on the last session, if we have uh, enough time, we can do some demo related how GitOps can help us to make our deployment uh, more secure more easy and of course speed up our time to market so uh what is devops uh this is taken from the amazon.com uh devops is the combination of cultural philosophies and also practices and tools that increase an organization ability to deliver application and service at high velocity. Yeah, uh, uh, we can highlight some what in here. First one is culture. 
uh, the second one is practice and the last one is tools yeah and we can highlight related the DevOps purpose yeah increase on organization ability to deliver application and service at high velocity uh, this is the three DevOps component divided into people process and tools like uh, the slide before the first component is people if we're talking about people we're talking about culture uh, and also mindset transitioning to DevOps requires a change in culture and mindset so DevOps is about removing barriers between two traditional silo team which is the development team and also operation team in some organization there may not even be separate deployment and operation team engineer may do both with DevOps the two team work together to optimize both the productivity of developer and the reliability of operation the second one is process or practice so we can see in the slide uh, so many practice that we can uh, follow there are few key practice that help organization innovate faster through automating and streamlining the software development and infrastructure management process most of this practice are accomplished with the proper tooling and the last one is about tools we're talking about tools while devops is culture the right stack of tool make it possible to implement devops successfully there are two primary approach to devops tool chain the first one is all in one or open tool chain the all-in-one DevOps solution provides a complete solution that usually doesn't integrate with the other party tools. And open tool chain uh, can be customized for a team need with the different tools. Yeah, this is the three basic concepts of DevOps practice. Yeah. The first one is continuous integration. You can see in the slide uh, with number one, uh, this is the continuous integration. That means uh, it's a practice that allows us as a developer to integrate code into code repositories, such as GitHub, Bitbucket, GitLab, and run tests quickly and automatically. The second one is continuous delivery. It's defined as a method of uh, deploying software that works well and has been tested in small piece so that it can be used as a full production platform and the last one is continuous deployment continuous deployment is a continuous implementation where all phase of the de deployment are carried out automatically without the need for human intervention so the difference between continuous delivery and continuous uh, deployment is about how we deploy the application into the production environment manually or automatically so uh, how about GitOps uh, before we already talking about DevOps and currently we are talking about uh, Git, what is GitOps so from the GitOps stack, uh, GitOps is, uh, is a way of implementing continuous deployment for cloud native application. So we highlight we highlight continuous deployment here. This is taken from the GitOps stack website. It focus in uh, in a developer centric experience when operating infrastructure by using tools developer are already familiar with including git and continuous deployment tools and this is uh, from the Kelsey Hightower what is GitOp? GitOp is version with uh, CICD on top of declarative infrastructure and then uh, uh, this is from me that what what is github uh, github is a set of practice to manage infrastructure 
and application deployment using Git as a single source of truth with declarative model. So GitOps uh, uh, set of practice. GitOps is not limited to Kubernetes. In principle, we can use any infrastructure uh, that can be observed and described declaratively and has infrastructure as a code tools available. However, currently, most of operator for full based GitOps are implemented with Kubernetes in mind. So in this session, we're talking about GitOps with Kubernetes. The core idea if the core idea of GitOps is having a Git repository that always contain declarative description of the current infrastructure desired in the production environment and an automated process to make the production environment match to the described state in the repository. If you want to deploy a new application or update an existing one, you only need to update the repository. The automated process take care of everything else. Okay, the next slide is uh, talking about GitOps principle. Uh, the first one is describe the entire system declaratively. Declarative, uh, we highlight in the first uh, slide, uh, declarative. As Git act as a single source of truth of for all DevOps operation, the entire system is described declaratively in Git using YAML file. Every change made to application, infrastructure, deployment, and environment are managed via Git. For instance, Kubernetes configuration and environment configuration can be managed with Helm or customized. The application code can be declared in a Docker file and Terraform can declare uh, the infrastructure. Not only we can quickly deploy a container and rollback, but we can also re reproduce the entire cluster infrastructure at the time of a disaster. With GitOps, we have complete history of how our uh, environment changes over time. This makes error recovery as easy as issuing a uh, Git revert and watching our environment being restored. Number two is uh, the desired state, system state is version in Git. As the version control system acts as, uh, as a central repository for declaring and managing the infrastructure's desired state, we can experiment with new feature and quickly roll back or revert when required. When a commit is made, details such as the commit information, commit timestamp, and also commit ID are stored in Git. So we can fully trace all the changes made to the state of the infrastructure at any given point in time. The ability to view the entire audit trail of changes bring transparency, transparency across the team in the organization. When the infrastructure and application are available as version Actifact, uh, so uh, auditing become easy to, I think, yeah. And the uh, GitHub principle number three is automatically apply a proof change to the system. So the, uh, in this point, we're talking about automation. The advantage of the declaration descriptive is uh, that we can declare the system uh, the desired state in the git code and then automate the system to apply all the approved change to the system by implementing a feedback control loop integrated into our continuous deployment pipeline we can automate the deployment this is significantly increase the number of changes we make per day it also reduces time for to-do deployment. 
And the last one is ensure correctness and alert on diversion with software agent. So we're talking about software agent or operator in GitOps. Software agent or operator, when the desired state doesn't match with the system actual state, so this is we have two state. One, uh, the first one is uh, the desired state, which is in the uh, Git repository. And the other one is uh, actual state, which is uh, in the actual state in the Kubernetes platform. When the desired state and the actual state, uh, the condition is not same, software agent or operator instantly alert us about the configuration change. With this approach, we can make sure about the quality of development environment and prevent for configuration drift. Yeah, uh, this is the function of the software agent or GitOps operator. Yeah, this is a comparison between declarative and imperative. In the declarative, we just describe what we want to achieve as opposed to how to get there. And then in the imperative model, we describe a sequence of instruction to manipulate the state of the system to reach our desired state. So this is uh, the difference eh, between the declarative and also imperative. Yeah, this is the example for the declarative one. Uh, we just describe what we want to be achieved. For example, how many replicas that we want and which image that we will use. Any and all changes made to the application environment deployment and infrastructure should be all be handled via git this therefore means that we should declare all this as code and maintain in a git repository code for the world system uh, will include uh, the first one is infrastructure code can be declared in the form of terraform module or plot formation script or other and then uh, Kubernetes configuration include a uh, detail of the deployment, uh, how many replicas and service and container image to deploy and etc. Uh, and then uh, environment configuration and also of course uh, the application code. So in the in the repository uh, we can include a. Uh, infrastructure code, Kubernetes configuration, environment configuration, and also application code. So uh, this is how GitOp, GitOps works. Uh, the first one is Git as the only source of truth. So every changes has to be uh, via Git, no direct access and doing some changes. In a typical DevOps environment, the CI components stand at the for, for front, in the front uh, of the pipeline. The CI component consider that the VCS as a service that provide input to trigger build operation and the CD as a service to deploy the code. It, it takes the code, run automated tests, and push the approved code to production using CD automation. So the next question is, why Git? Yeah, I think uh, all of us in here are uh, already familiar with Git. Git is the most popular version uh, control system. Yeah, uh, most popular VCS among developer circles. As most developers are familiar with Git, it becomes easy to work a uh, GitHub project. Yeah, and I believe almost all of you already use Git, is it? Yeah. And uh, 
and the next one is GitHub use the operator. Uh, operator mean uh, software agent. Uh, the function is uh, as a deployment synchronizer. It is deployed within uh, Kubernetes and use a control loop to pull the Git repository and check if any new commit are pushed. When a new commit is applied, it immediately converts the cluster state to the newly declared state. So what the difference between DevOps CICD pipeline versus uh, GitHub workflow? Yeah, this is typical DevOps CICD pipeline. Starting from the developer, write the code and commit uh, to the version control system or Git or GitHub or Bitbucket and so on, and triggering the build pipeline. And then CI server take the code and run automate testing on it. A proof code is built automatically and then uh, push to the container image. We can use uh, Harbor, we can use uh, Docker Hub in here. Uh, and then the automation deployment tool push the container to production. And uh, and then the container orchestration tool is used to manage container. Yeah, this is the typical DevOps CI CD pipeline. And the next is GitHub workflow, typical workflow in GitHub environment. Uh, starting from uh, developer, uh, push the code into the application repository. The code is reviewed and approved by the ref relevant people. And then the code is merged into the Git repository. When a change is detected, the CI build pipeline get triggered. The CI tool automatically run test. Once the code pass or test, it build the image and push into the image repository. CI build pipeline also update the config repository YAML file in environment repository. The operator detect the change in the cluster. It pull the change from the environment or config repository and update the outdated cluster with the new one. When the state of your system is declared and kept under version control, software agent can inform you whenever reality doesn't match your expectation. The use of agent also ensure that your entire system is self-healing. So the difference between uh, GitOps workflow and also CICD pipeline in DevOps is we have two uh, repository. One repository is for the application repository, and the second one is environment repository. This is a uh, call is the shared state. And the operator, uh, operator ensure that the actual state, so this is actual state, It always same uh, with the desired state. So this state in GitHub repository always monitoring by the operator. And if any changes uh, happen in this repository, uh, operator uh, deploy to the actual state. So actual state and the desired state is always same with function of the operator. Yes, uh, this is some advantage of GitOps. The first one is faster time to market. 
in uh, DevOps environment, faster deployment are uh, default requirement, right? So, however, uh, GitHub take it to the direct level, to the next level, as the deployment happen right within the source code. As code is developed and pushed to Git, it is automatically deployed using the same deployment tool. And number two is uh, improved security. The GitOps approach prohibit direct access to the CI CD system, to the cluster, Kubernetes cluster, I mean, and prohibited someone to change directly to cluster using kubectl tool because with GitOps, no access to cluster from outside. With GitOps, there are no credential outside of the cluster, for example, in the CI server. And also the strong correctness and security guarantee provided by Git and backed by strong cryptography used to track and manage changes, as well as the ability to sign changes to prove authorship and origin is key to a secure definition of the desired state of the cluster. And the number three is more reliable. Reliable mean that uh, GitOps allow us to revert back or roll back with a click of a button. Uh, <clears throat> we can experiment with new feature <clears throat> very quickly and undo them in case of our code unexpected behavior. It also increases productivity level while being reliable and secure. And the next point is improve developer experience. Yeah, because GitHub using Git, that almost uh, almost of the developer already uh, familiar with Git. So this is improve uh, the developer experience. And the next uh, advantage is auditable. Auditable is mean easy for doing some auditing in a github environment every changes is made via the repository as such you can check the brand history at any given point in time to see the complete deployment history and the history of each change made to the code the free audit trail feature essentially simplifies auditing tasks moreover Every team can check the Git repo and update with what's happening across the development lifecycle. It also makes our editing task very, very easy. <clears throat> and the last one for the advantage of GitOps is standardized operation across the infrastructure. So uh, GitOps enable us to create a standard model for change management across the apps, deployment and add-ons. It means you have Git center end-to-end -end workflow that are consistent across the infrastructure. It also provides greater visibility into the CICD pipeline. Uh, Mr. Rab, Marmaroni, can we make it a bit short for your ending session because we are already overrun? Okay, okay. All right, thank you. Okay, uh, this is maybe for the uh, last, uh, my last slide. So, uh, GitHub best practice, uh, the first one is split repo. So, we have to uh, split repo between the application repo and environment config repo. And then uh, we have to test the manifest before commit. And then uh, git manifest uh, should not change due to external change. So we have to do some changes using git manifest. And the last one is plan how to manage secret. And the uh, tools uh, that we can use for this uh, GitOps uh, model, Fruxd, Argo CD, and Jenkins X. 
we can browse to the link to learn more about the, this tool. All of these tools are open source project, so we can use it and then contribute to their project. And this is my last slide. And sorry for offrun. Uh, thank you. No worries, no worries. Uh, so, Mr. Ramani, we got one question. If you can ask a bit quickly, uh, if you can go to share notes area. So, there's one question. Uh, if I can speak it out loud, how errors failure in any part of the pipeline have been uh, uh, being handled? Does it require manual intervention from ops engineer? Require them to access the part and fail directly in order to troubleshoot? Can you answer that? Yeah, I think uh, we can uh, get uh, feedback if any uh, error appear in the our pipeline automatically, and the rest of the step of the pipeline uh, we not uh, follow until finish because uh, we have some error in the part of the beginning of the pipeline. So I think this is the automatically and uh we have to set up but uh how our cicd pipeline doing alerting and also uh give uh feedback uh maybe via slack or maybe via email or sms maybe okay uh, i think uh, uh any question i think the situation is from kamal because i i saw him typing just now so uh probably you guys can uh, ask him much more other questions after this because we are going to to our keynote speaker which is already on the line uh, right now so mr uh, ramadoni thanks for your for your time uh, to share on your topic so probably we'll see you next year thank you thank you thank you thank all you right so all right thank you so without further ado i think uh, i can i can just yep someone already passed uh, professor uh, Dr. Dr. Suhaimi. So, Dr. Suhaimi, I think uh, you are free to wait. Let me take this one first. Uh, right. So, yep. So, I think. Can I? Can you so, guys hear me? So, can you can guys you hear, hear me? me? Okay. Yes. Yes. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. I just, I just don't want to take too much of your time. Right, my name is Suhaimi. Uh, I'm from Sifulan, Malaysia, as well as founder and CEO of Biruni Soft, and that's my uh, email. And I'm going to give you or share with you my OSS journey from the time during my uh, younger years right up until now. Uh, before that, Professor, I think we didn't yep. see your slide yet huh? on the screen. Yes. Are we you didn't sure? see it's like yes okay 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 one, ah yeah 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 one, yeah one, all right why 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 you said why, why you configure up so i think uh as you know our okay. keynote speaker is uh, uh is a, a professor in uh so but uh right now he uh he will uh talk about more on his journey so can can you still share the screen just one moment all right we're just waiting one moment Right. Okay. So, uh, moment, let me check. All uh, right, all uh, right. Okay. Can you can you see? All right. So we can yeah. see the slide now. So, Professor, take it away. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Shazwan, for for giving me this opportunity as well as uh, the organizer. Hello, everyone. Uh, what they called it? I just proceed to my uh, like I said just now my early journeys towards IT and OSS as an undergraduate at Iowa State in the yesteryears of 1979, 1986, followed by my PhD uh, from the time of about uh, 1988 till 1991. So this is the first part of my journey. I, it consists of three parts. So I will just uh, proceed further by what you know, but giving you an idea as to what motivates me as a biologist, uh, you know, to, to actually look at uh, computers as something in which I, I, you know, out of my curiosity. So during my study, uh, 
doing my uh, undergraduate study i believe it is my second year where i i took physics 101 102 and 103 during the lab period i i was inside the same lab where this atana softberry computer is you know was i think i think at that time it was like not being taken care of and that was the on the left side there it shows how uh, it looks earlier on as far as i can remember and then the right side of that the building where i took my uh, physics class so this is actually the time when i got i took interest in uh, in perhaps computers and and if you uh, can see in the future also this is where uh, probably what got me interested the physics 101 102 103 abc computers during the lab session and then i took pascal programming uh, if you guys i don't know maybe too young to remember uh, about pascal programming there will always be the right line and read key and begin and end and i use computer punch card and then later on i use vex terminal with crt monitor and very noisy keyboards and then when it comes to printing out the output uh, i use a very large format 9 pin dot metric printer with this uh, continuous form paper i yet again i do not know whether people came across all this but i'm going to give you a little bit about how it looks like as far as the printer is concerned and also the print out as it come out with that unique uh blue horizontal uh, sorry green horizontal bar so this is what i did and then this is actually during my maybe towards the end of my second year going into the third year where i took the class so that that got me interested further and then uh at that time it move on from the uh deck of uh, computer punch card into the vex terminal as you see on the left side there and that was the one i used with the main frame if i am not mistaken i do not know what 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 it does but i just do know how to call and then how to type all right and then followed during my uh continue on with during my masters year and this is the office computer the apple 2e my first exposure towards a desktop computer uh with a double uh, double uh, what do you call it double drive 5 and a quarter inch and this is what i did to actually type my master's thesis so if you notice uh, all the way back since the birth of apple in perhaps 1984 uh that was that when i had when i did my my master's degree and that was the one i used and on the right side uh, actually the nice beautiful looking uh amstrad pc 1512 is again a double sided a double double disk drive floppy disk and with the ram of 512k <coughs> So uh, if you look at this this is what uh, my, my master's thesis looks like and I managed to get it from the archive of Iowa state all the way back in 1986 it was typed on apple 2 uh, e print uh, uh, desktop computer and printed on a daisy wheel printer with exchangeable font and single pass ribbon so to those of you who are probably as young as me will understand what i'm talking about when it comes to a daisy wheel printer where you for for the uh, for the font you will have to choose whether it is times new roman whether it is uh, helvetica or whatever you will need to change the daisy wheel of the printer uh, to get the right uh, font okay so going back to the phd era and i'm going to bring you back to the first bioinformatics software of course at that time uh, i was 2 years old in 1962 so they are using this huge massive ibm 7090 mainframe and of course the punch card uh with with a single line on fortran code 
is actually being used as the um, what they call it as the input to drive the uh, what they call that the program so the entire program source code is in punch card so this is actually uh, just giving you a little bit of an idea whereby uh, you are able to do analysis such as this uh, com protein or computer protein, if I remember it correctly, where you would be able to have this consensus sequence at, or sequence in which you will know the the, the exact uh, sequence uh, in the what they call that life, right? So moving on, of course, uh, the uh, in 1997 we are talking about. I use also Commodore Pet. Uh, Apple to 10D. I've got all that and I even toy around with basic basic language or whatever, which are you know was an easy language program for non-programmer. So uh during the PhD era in 90 uh what they call that later on um the University of Wisconsin Genetic Computer Group has a package which I still then use in the year of 1988 or 1989. And of course, as uh, GCG, ataupun, uh, the genetic computing group was designed to work on a small scale mainframe computer. And at that time, it was this, this co a computer, a little bit smaller. And this is a DEC VEX 11780 mini computers instead of the mainframe. So all you see, the thing is getting more miniaturized, more miniaturized. And by the time uh, I, I was doing my uh, PhD, uh, there is a lot of these uh, computers or, or PC that is ongoing. And of course, there are many, many uh, software that has already been uh, coded and utilized. And of course, the developer of those software usually offered free code copies on demand. And of course, the this actually exemplifying an upcoming software sharing movement in the programming world at least in the in the context of uh, scientific computing so all in all bioinformatics tool used are uh, mostly developed by fellow researchers they are open source uh although during the time when i was doing my my phd towards the end in the early 1990s one or two companies already started to develop uh, services riding onto the open source code of the software or bioinformatics software so that is the thing now we uh, are more and more uh suites uh, of services uh, on demand that you can actually pay some are open source some are offered for free and some actually you will have to pay to uh, to use so these are the, the, the time when I was doing uh, the PhD uh, studies, examples of the software uh, used, the basic local alignment search tool uh, that will uh, do similarity alignment, uh, cluster out the multiple sequence alignment, gene scan. This is the gene in genomic. I'm giving you an idea so that by now, you should realize that I am not a computer scientist. I am a plant molecular biologist. So what I did was that I just got to know how to use the software and the tool uh, as simple as like uploading the sequence, changing the setting, adjusting the parameter so that I can get uh, the correct output and the most optimized output. So I am practically a user of these bioinformatics software that has already been uh, developed by my fellow researcher. So moving on, this is where I think the beginning. Uh, when I did my PhD thesis type on Amstrad, that PC1512, uh, is actually I was using the latex uh, word processor. People may not uh, like of me using the word processor, but in my case, I use it for my, uh, what they call that, I use it for my uh, PhD thesis. And this is an example of 
uh, a page of my PhD thesis uh, submitted or rather deposited into the library of the University of Durham in 1992, 21st of April. If you notice the uh, what they call that the abstract, you will notice that all these uh, you know italics, the bold, the underline, superscript, subscript are all. If you are familiar with the latex, you will have to type slash uh, forward slash text bf for boldface slash text it or for italic and slash underline for uh, what they call that. Uh, for you to actually underline certain words. And by golly, many, many, many occasions, I forgot to close, therefore, the whole page from that point when I didn't close all either, all italicized, all underlined. And these are the, the pains that I have gone through. And I'm sure to those who, are, who have used or are still using latex will understand. As a biologist, I do not understand as to why you need to close the command. But I just know that you have to close the command without realizing why. But I know it works, so I, I just follow. But I'm quite sure you, the one who really do the coding and being an IT people, will know that you know every command will need to have it closed. Otherwise, you know the computer will not understand. So. That is the part of my, uh, what they call that, yesteryears during my study. But what I'm going to go into the second phase here is actually I spent 27 years at University Putra, Malaysia. From 1992 until early 2020 when I retired. <coughs> Compulsory retirement in Malaysia, to those who of you who are not familiar with Malaysian uh, government servant uh, rule, is that by 60, by the time you reach 60, 60th birthday, you are supposed to get out of the system. So that's what I did in the year 2020. So I'm going into my two years, <coughs> excuse me, of retirement. So I'm going to give you an idea as to, you know, what is life working and my life working at the University of Putra, Malaysia. So I began lecturing, I began supervising, I began doing research on plant molecular biology and biotechnology all along, of course, being an integral part of my uh, supervising and doing research is utilization of the bioinformatics software and tools and uh, during the time there wasn't any bioinformatics course and i uh, single-handedly started the bioinformatics course which probably was among the first in malaysia at the time so i do a little bit of uh, uh, understanding about a linux system a little bit here and there but it's just very basic so that people or the student can appreciate the interaction instead of the present day. I think during that time, you can have this, this point and click point and, 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 and invoke. So to appreciate the fact of command line interface is necessary in bioinformatics analysis. So of course, during that time, I'm quite happy that after several uh, batches of students taking uh, my course, uh, my bioinformatics course, I managed to trigger the interest of several students uh, to pursue postgraduate studies and become lecturers, or uh, at least two of them that I know of personally and still I'm in contact with ended up working in bioinformatics and IT companies. So they are actually a molecular, they are actually a biotechnologist and molecular biologist, and then pursue postgraduate study, and then out of their own interest, using all the sources that they have, dummy books here, dummy books there, is actually they manage to work in an IT company as it is now. So it is not impossible to actually for the non-computer scientists to actually venture into IT. Although maybe I can call myself not an IT person, but a pseudo 
uh, IT. I know what it does. I did a little bit of coding, but uh, not so much. But the most important is actually understand the needs and requirement. So uh, during the time when uh, in the early days that I encountered two challenges when it comes to my teaching and when it comes to doing my research involving bioinformatics analysis. Unfortunately, the lack of, we do not have at UPM the compute power and storage as well as number two, internet bandwidth speed. And you are talking here about the early, uh, just mid into the late 1990s, uh, where actually uh, internet bandwidth speed is pretty much lacking, uh, at least in, in, in uh, universities. So I have to solve these two challenges. So of course, uh, upon coming back home, I'm I'm proud to say that these two on the left side is Apple Macintosh LC3 is the one I purchased using my own grant. And then on the right side, UPM actually supply each lecturer a Sun Spark Station 5. All right, I put there, and this is not actually my computer, but I put it just I put it there as a picture to illustrate that not many people know how to use SunSpark 5. They do not know about the power of SunSpark 5. So therefore, uh, they ask, you know, I, I asked my colleague, hey, do you, uh, are you using it? I said, no, okay, never mind. Can I have it? And then I said, never mind when you are going to use it, you can, you can, I can return it back. So I have something like three SunSpark Station 5. There you go. I got these uh, tools with me and I know for a fact that Sunspark station is a very powerful station that is capable of making it, uh, turning it into a, a web server. So that's what, what I did. And I have Macintosh LC2 for office and graphic design. I have the tool of Sunspark, a few of them for actually doing uh, what I like at that time was the in thing to do uh, a web server and to build the website. So this was my first exposure to Unix using Solaris. So that is the thing, uh, this is the thing that triggered me and going into more, uh, I think during that time, uh, usually I sleep until one o'clock and two o'clock just to study because it is very hard. So I started to learn how to set up the web server, to set up the build website using HTML coding, native HTML coding. I remembered using Notepad and VI Editor as during that time there was no, uh, what do they call that, uh, front page or no Dreamweaver or I can't remember what it is. This so-called what you see is what you get editor. So at that time there wasn't any. And during the time when towards the a few years that I did my coding, then I realized that then then of course Microsoft started and then Adobe started to bring out their why why what you see is what you get uh, what they call that editor. And I must thank to the many individual as a computer center who put up with me asking so many questions. And of course I must thank also the dummy guide books. So that's what I did. So all in all, I built several sites. Uh, several website hosting and indexing bioinformatic resources from scratch and okay this is what what i did one of them which i tried uh, to actually look at the archive and it was gone but as a, a testimony or as an evidence of my doing i put up a, pro, uh, a website <coughs> called Gene Jockey Biomolecular Cyber Resource. It is a, a resource for bioinformatics, links, uh, or, or maybe all the books, all the courses uh, that is able to help other fellow uh, molecular biologists to actually the doing the analysis. So at that time, it was the in thing. You do indexing. I'm sure if you remember, Yahoo also started out with doing indexing. So this is what I did. 
And then um, moving on to that is actually I managed to find the the second website which I did and which is called Malaysian Synergy Center for Biology and IT, MSC BIT. And this is how it looked like. And to those of you who are not familiar, uh, I you, you will see Alta Vista uh, search engine as being the main one because Alta Vista uh, Center was at UPM MTDC Center. So I went in there. So it so happened that I got to know to uh, the people there, the uh, Alam Technocrat. I do not know if you are Malaysian, you remember about Alam Technocrat uh, as one of the IT companies. And then, of course, during that time, this is all coded in native HTML. You will have search engine like Lycos, Alta Vista, Infosix, and everything. And then, of course, at that time, uh, this is not a robot bot thing, right? This is 23,012, as, as the archive says, is actually real user trying to access. At that time, uh, in the early days, in 1997, December, is actually something quite uh proud of of course i think i ha i only have myself to actually break anyway this is what it is and moving on of course uh the second phase where the start of my involvement in international collaboration so i was actively involved and still i am active with the asia pacific advanced network and uh, since 1997 just a sole purpose to try and solve the connectivity issue to solve the connectivity issue is one and then to initiate the collaborative engagement with researchers uh, having similar issues around the world especially in the uh, southeast asian region and i have uh, friends where which i'm still friend with uh, from Institute Technology Bandung. Now I had a new more friend from Institute Pertanian Bogor, University Islam Neg uh, Negeri, uh, University Islam Indonesia, or whatever. There are so many universities that I am uh, acquainted with. So these are the culmination of, I do not know, since 1998, uh, 97 era. So I started out during that time a Biomirror project, which is actually because of the connectivity connectivity issue uh, we will have to actually mirror the entire what they call that website with the database uh, in this project uh, in 1998 as a collaboration of uh, Indiana universities and of course uh, it distribute data bank using internet to between continent and at that time uh, we have a Malaysian node established and uh, this is what uh, my, one of my achievements also during that time. I managed to secure uh, funding from UPM to purchase. At that time, it was a huge Sunfire V880 server. It's a very big server at that time. And of course, it contains or it has the DDS tape drive. And connectivity, since it, is, it was the main issue, the DDS tape drive is actually uh, being heavily utilized because the tapes has got to be queried periodically for update of software and sequence data. So occasionally, you know, within quarter or maybe half a month, uh, sorry, half a year, I will receive maybe seven or eight DDS tape from the uh, original Biomirror for us to actually upload uh, and update. So during that time, we are pressurized. Okay, we are we are being pressurized as as far as Malaysia is concerned to solve the connectivity connectivity issue, and partner countries in in APAN has already knocking on our door and said, Malaysia, you will have to get your act together to try and solve the connectivity issue at least from inside Malaysia. So to solve this. I yet again uh, involved myself or volunteer to involve myself in, with the committee, uh, the so-called uh, Teman uh, and Teman 2 committee 
to form what we call at that time Malaysian Research and Education Network. I was the only non-IT, non-engineering member. And my task at that time is to provide input for applications such as agriculture, bioinformatics, education, and so on and so forth. So accumulating to that after much uh, haggling here and there, uh, with ministries and everything, Myren was launched in 2005. Myren was launched in 2005 by uh, by three ministries: the Higher Education Ministries, uh, the Mosti, as well as the Custodian Ministry, which is the Ministry of Energy, Water, and Communication. So, in the first phase, uh, MDEC or at that time MDC. Uh, was entrusted to operate on behalf of Mohi. So at that time already, Myren has got a dedicated direct link to US, Europe, Australia, New Zealand, China, India, Japan, and some ASEAN countries. And of course, more so uh, is being done until today. So it's already, I don't know, maybe 12, 15 years already, maybe 16 years. Right. Uh, moving on further, during the time when I was uh, at UPM, uh, people started to get notice as to my keen interest in uh, IT, although as a biologist myself from the Faculty of Biotechnology. So uh, during that time, I was appointed by the top management as the director of Infocom Development Center. And my task is to actually transform ICT at UPM. And at that point in time, I put top priority on ICT support for research and education. So uh, such thing as uh, addressing the server, addressing the compute requirement, the storage requirement, all in all having in my mind researchers that has been struggling and I do not want uh, other uh, colleagues, uh, my fellow researchers, having the same predicament and the same challenges, uh, hungry for compute, hungry for storage to do their bioinformatics analysis. So that's what uh, has been going on. Uh, there are many other universities and research institutions also uh, looking into this. So I think. Uh, during that time, I consider it as uh, something of my priority. So during that time, we, I was lucky, or uh, rather we were lucky during the era of the early development of IDEC. Uh, there was uh, extra money provided by University Putra Malaysia to the tune, if I'm not mistaken, about $4 million. And we purchased hardware for two projects. One is the so-called, I put in open and close inverted comma, rapid server procurement. This is provisioning, provisioning of virtual machine for intranet system uh, to use internally for UPM system, as well as for research purposes to those who wish to have the, the, the virtual machine for their web, serv, uh, web server or whatever their interest uh, demands. So that is one part. And the second uh, project was on grid computing. This is to address the compute power uh, demand by researchers for uh, the many computationally intensive applications such as the bioinformatics, the uh, rapid prototyping, the rapid manufacturing, and the uh, crash tests of uh, what they call that engineering and uh, fluid dynamic. I don't know when there's there are many of them that actually demand uh, high performance and grid computing. So that was the thing uh, on the next phase during the uh, as a director of IDEC, and I'm uh, what they call that. I'm quite happy to actually been able to address the researchers' need now. Remember, on the previous slide, I mentioned about rapid server procurement. It, this is basically to provision rapidly servers for the use by researcher as well as by uh, for use by our own internal system. I still vividly remember that we use three types. 
uh, this is by no mean endorsement, but this is what we did. Uh, we use KVM, we use Zen, we use VMware, and we are using it for learning as well as for comparison in terms of its performance as well as ease of use. Now, rapid server procurement was the, the term coined out because I need to rapidly procure the virtual machine, which actually brings about what the term called virtualization, which actually brings about later on the cloud computing. So at that time, during the time when we did this, uh, there was an, uh, the, the coining of the cloud uh, already, you know, yet. I think it's a little bit later after one or two years, uh, we have been running this rapid server procurement. And of course, I must thank to IDEC technical team. It's not me who is doing all this. It's actually the staff of the IDEC technical team helping me with this. So this time around, I relieved myself of having to do uh, coding and I just ask uh, and they will have to do it for me. I think it's fun to, do, to be able to do that. And uh, the second project for grid computing, uh, we use uh, Scientific Linux 4.7 at that time in the year circa 2007. We use Sun Luster file system, Sun Grid Engine, and then uh, also using the uh, GLite middleware for purpose of having an international middleware for interoperability. So we purchased uh, quite a large sum, uh, about 50 IBM Blade servers. Uh, at that time, it was top range, two times Intel Xeon quad core, uh, eight gigabit, gigabyte RAM. Uh, we will have uh, three IBM X3650 servers as the head node and the storage node. And then, of course, uh, what they call that Sun storage or Sun uh, machine uh, for storage capacity. So all in all, I think um, we spent uh, close to about four million doing all this. So at that time in the year 2007, it's considered to be quite substantial. Even now, I think 4 million is quite substantial. <clears throat> okay, this is uh, Mr. Farhan in the early days when he was young. So he was the one forming what we term as, as Biruni Grid. And Biruni Grid is actually a cluster of grid computing. And if you see the bottom part there is two big, uh, sorry, massive rack side by side and this is a 42u rack and then you notice all the servers and all the storage and all the power and everything so farhan together with the rest of the technical team at idec practically have to install the ram everything from scratch and put it into the slot of the uh the chassis okay so we do it all by themselves and of course, at that time, I also formed what we term as uh, Academic Grid Malaysia uh, in an attempt to actually bring about clusters uh, within the, re, uh, the universities to be put together as a single, seamless, uh, opportunistic uh, compute power. So during that time also, we formed, but of course, the Grid Forum Society is now defunct and uh the rest is just history if you can see you can still see this uh at upm and, and it's still running and this machine although it has been i do not know there's a long time already all right maybe more more than uh what 15 years 16 years so okay for the a little bit more about biruni grid let me take my time okay for the Biruni grid, uh, we have three clusters, the uh, gigabit uh, clusters, uh, gigabit internet, uh, G, uh, what do you call it, Kaldun sandbox, uh, Razi cluster, and this is uh, gigabit uh, what get it? Uh, interconnect also. And we also have this cluster that are using the old generation of InfiniBand. So majority part is actually the uh, 28 worker node and at that time it was quite substantial and 
uh, as just when people in the MDEC or whatever that talk about sandbox in the year 2007, we already talk about sandbox cluster as, as uh, for experimental grid for development and learning purposes, while the two Razi and Haitam clusters are designated as a production grid. So at any point in time, uh, the rest of it can be put into one to perform computation. So opportunistic, it's just a matter of us making sure the availability based on the scheduler and the g light middleware. And of course, uh, this thing is connected to my RAN. And actually, uh, because of that connection, all the universities are connected to my RAN and you will have a direct connectivity uh, to actually utilize uh, the service, the cluster compute. And, and, and also, uh we receive compute jobs from international because uh of the virtue of our collaboration and actually during that time it was fun to do so and we received some uh accolade and recognition from international saying that yes we contributed certain certain number of uh cpu hours for their work involving at that time it was dengue uh dengue fever uh, vaccine, uh, what they call that, design. So, of course, um, we we were quite lucky because we received a grant uh, to the tune of about a million uh, euro. Uh, but, of course, we received about 200,000 Malaysian ringgit uh, because it has to be divided into 14 countries. And we, we use this uh, money to actually uh, do a lot of support action to become the grid resource provider. We support U University Malaya, University Technology Malaysia, Nuclear Malaysia, UUM, NUSM, and of course, UPM. We put it all, you gridify the local clusters as well as international clusters into one opportunistic compute power seamlessly. So, at that time, for Malaysian uh, total computing story, uh, sorry, computing storage, sorry, total computing, and I can't remember the storage, but at least for the total compute, you were, we were, we had about uh, 700 CPU cores, and this is not actually a virtual CPU cost; it is a real CPU cost. That means physically, it is a real core, not the notional where you can have 1000 uh, virtual machine which in fact actually coming up from maybe 100 uh, cpu cores okay cpus so of course um uh, during the time when this project was uh, was uh, carried out there are many many more cores are available from other countries such as taiwan and the major uh, people involved uh, and these are actually I, one thing I must I must let you uh, realize, remember, this is 2008. This is actually 2008. And I'm not sure whether we still have this now in Malaysia, but of course, uh, I still hopeful that Malaysia can have, you know, will not be living far behind behind than our, our friends from Indonesia. And I know that they are doing a lot of, uh, uh, grid, uh, sorry, high performance computing infrastructure there. So, okay, personally, okay, personally, from uh, from my view, I move from I think it was window W uh, Windows. I don't. I hate to call that window uh, to even uh, what they call it. Uh, speak the word W uh, Windows. So W ninety seven. Uh, this is the desktop I used last, and I moved on to OSS. And I must thank Shazwan as well as uh, Isaac for uh, for helping me, helping me uh, the start of migration uh, of my desktop OSS from from W97. If I remember it correctly, uh, I started out with Kubuntu followed by Zorin, and then now I am using as I speak and use this computer for using endless OS. 
uh, simply because I think uh, to me personally, it, it looks fun and it looks like uh, the future of uh, tablet type. Okay, but of course, I know many, many more uh, having this sort of uh, environment, uh, what they call it, user interface. But since I'm so used to endless OS, so I'm not sure whether uh, ever I change to any other than endless OS for now. Okay, so for the office automation, of course, uh, I started out with Open Office, I started out with WPS, and uh, and then also now I'm using Libra Office. Of course, I said, you know, I must uh, acknowledge and I must admit, I struggle with installation. Uh, I still do ask uh, using any desk. Uh, Isaac as well. Oh, I have not asked uh, Shazwan yet, but I always ask Isaac to help me with installation and he always say, okay, use flat pack. So I, I sometimes do sudo and and so on but of course i i must thank the oss community wherever and whenever in whatever form in whatever group always i can get help from them and i think i must uh, salute you uh, the OSS, oss community for for helping me uh to do all this without you i won't be able to do all this I'm not saying that uh, it will be it will be impossible for me to not say uh, that I am already actually very comfortable that me uh, with uh, open aside or OSS and everything. No, I still struggle. Uh, at times, I still ask question, but I manage. So if you notice here, I give you a little bit of what I did. <coughs> uh, <coughs> what do you call that? The the logos, the Zorin OS, the Kubuntu the Libra Office, the Pinta, the Ocula, and I don't know how do you spell that, X-O-U-R, journal for my note taking. And there are of course others, but this is I most uh, commonly use uh, for my purpose of my presentation, uh, for my note taking and so on. But there are many which I install and uh, and so on. So I, I will spend hopefully the uh, probably another 10 minutes or so uh, this is the thing, the third phase, where towards the end of my career, when I am about to retire. So, of course, uh, first and foremost, uh, I must acknowledge the effort of Ministry of Education, Open Science Education Community, whereby uh, involvement of the Division of uh, Information Management, or BPM, uh, teachers as well as OSS community, uh, we established this MOE OSEC. Uh, we had several meetings, and cumulating to that meeting, uh, we managed at least to address the operating system for the shipment of perhaps some 30,000 new uh, PC for the labs. And we initiated a, pil a pil pilot project, and uh, during the time, we agree to have uh, uh, what they call that endless OS and liberal office being installed. This is actually, I'm sure people will argue to those who are passionate about others than uh, endless OS and liberal office, hey, you know, you are, you are biased. No, we are not biased. It was a decision purely aimed at streamlining the pilot deployment. deployment. It is by no means cast in stone. If there are better ways and better solution, maybe we, there will be changes but for now we have to put our foot down and get something for streamlining the pilot deployment so that's what the decision uh is aimed at okay don't don't say that you know but of course i'm passionate about endless os because i use os endless os and i'm comfortable for both but that should not necessarily mean that it will stand there forever okay so to those who are who are maybe not uh, what they call that who are wondering as to why those two was chosen so the pilot is actually now ongoing i i'm not sure what will be the status uh, i know it will be known in due course and i do not know i heard that some more than 10 or fifteen thousand, uh what they call that uh, pieces has been actually installed with those two of course there are challenges as far as old old printers and so on 
in terms of its compatibility. But that is something in which uh, we will have to solve amicably soon. So uh, this is actually what MOE or Ministry of Education Spirit, they said it is mutual coexistence. The, the spirit of this mutual coexistence, in this case, at, at least has allowed an opportunity to expose school children to OSS at the very least, instead of having to actually know only one world, which is actually the, if you in Malay, it means the think up, the think up world, yeah, no, to, to OSS. So at least something has been done in that sense. So, of course, uh, moving on this, I hope I, I need to do it faster. Uh, leveraging our experience on the running of the certificate authority, uh, we actually form what we term as Sifulan Malaysian Access Federation. Sifulan Malaysian Access Federation is an identity federation for uh, research and education community. Uh, we have been operational since 2014 and it was uh, we were accepted officially as the 57th member of the edugain interfederation uh, in july 2018 so uh, being a member uh, of edugain had made sifulan uh, very much uh, uh, what they call it at the forefront of uh, federated single sign on uh, many many service providers uh, are slowly coming in the the identity pr uh, providers also you know uh, will be coming in and of course uh, i have to say this that uh, just before i retired i formed a startup company called birunisoft and at this present moment we are the founder and the operator of uh, sifulan so sifulan malaysia uh, our tagline local id global trust we expand home organization single sign on federatedly to extranet application uh, and we move it as seamless uh, access towards what we term as a federated services that means you can go to your intranet and use the same single sign on and then at the same one while you are in session you can go to extranet for other federated services outside your ip range so of course uh edugain just to give a little bit of uh information it is actually a world interfederation and if you notice sorry i put there a little bit 2000 over 20000 entities both identity providers and service providers belonging to 74 federation and the, re the rest is just counting uh, excuse the green thing that i accidentally put there but you may notice that except greenland middle africa and southeast asia with the exception of malaysia and singapore uh, is actually they are all connected including australia and new zealand and soon there will be more and more i understand that uh, the thailand is coming up and federasi.id is also coming up uh, courtesy of you in Unity Islam Indonesia, UEE, I think, Unity Islam Indonesia in uh, Yogyakarta. Bapak Andri. All right. Okay. So uh, just a little bit uh, more about Sifulan. Uh, we do identity federation. We do single sign on. We uh, facilitate access to internet and intranet application. We actually uh, promote research collaboration. Uh, secure research collaboration we have services such as file sender and yes big blue button we have uh, installed at my uh, courtesy of us we help them with install so we are i'm uh, quite familiar in fact i love bbb more than i love others and of course last but not least i put their discounted service for those sifulan member students sifulan uh, sorry students from uh what they call that universities that belong to Sifulan can enjoy discount service from Apple Music and Spotify Premium. So this is a major thing, you know, identity verification and validation has a wide ranging application. Uh, for example, discount for purchases of products and services uh, such as Apple Music uh, and Spotify. 
uh, as well as others. Some uh, they have even McDonald, they even have Marks and Spencer in the UK. But all those are not yet in Malaysia. But I'm sure in due time soon, uh, this identity verification and validation for student uh, status is actually uh, very, uh, very much in demand. Uh, what they call that? All courtesy of my uni days. Actually, my uni days is part of uh, Sifulan service provider. I know I put here in the interest of time, I put a screenshot of the list of the organization. You will have um, many universities, uh, public universities, uh, MyRAN, Ministry of Higher Education, private university, as well as uh, what they call it, teachers. Uh, Teachers Education uh, Institute, all right. Uh, IMU is one of them. Perdana U is one of the private one, and we are soliciting and doing POC with some uh, private universities as well as public universities as we speak now. <clears throat> so, of course, uh, this is I think my last two or three slide. So, what about the work access control? So. While Sipulan is uh, an, an application access control, we have a situation also in which we are venturing into, uh, which is actually network access control. Of course, network vendors, I'm sure you all will remember, has features for accepting SAML single sign-on for their network access authentication. Uh, we also have uh, installed in uh, several universities as well as Myren also have installed educational vpn where uh, it provide a public private network uh, vpn and it can uh, be authenticated through single sign on with sifulat so that means since edu vpn is an open source thing you can have anybody belonging to the database of user within the organization uh, have, you know able to use edu vpn and can securely do uh, access whether intranetly uh, or to, to access some other services uh, that can be done using Edu VPN uh, instead of having to pay for the ISP uh, VPN license. The part where uh, becoming most interesting is uh, the Edu Roam, which is actually a federated authentication service for Wi Fi roaming using home institution credential. We haven't done this. Point number four, which we e are, we are eager to actually do this to actually make a seamless uh, a single sign-on or federated access for application as well as the network, all using a single credential. So, because Eduroom is at network layer layer number three, and we are currently working to use a single sign-on, which is actually the application layer of layer seven as the vetting method for subsequent Wi-Fi authentication. Stay tuned. It will be on the first quarter next year, inshallah. So uh, what, we, what we have done is actually we are moving into uh, cloud native application development. Uh, we, are, we, we select uh, which open source software we, we use uh, because we are particular, particularly uh, concerned about maturity and support by the community and as well as we are adamant into going to use them for our production system. So if you notice there, the, the three logos, Sifulan Malaysian Access Federation, Sifulan Electronic ID and Sifulan Stats and Analysis are some of these services that we are already uh, put as the minimum viable product for now and undergoing massive testing. Uh, the example of the open source software to, uh, tools used in our development uh, is Kubernetes. I think everybody knows Elasticsearch. Uh, I think I remember my previous, uh, uh, what they call that, uh, presenter talk, talk about GitHub and uh, Jenkins. I do not know much about this, but I have an able-bodied hand of the staff, uh, Mr. Farhan, uh, Mr. Irfan and Atika to help me with all this. Don't ask me about this Kubernetes because I don't understand much, but I know how, what, it, what it does. So in the future, uh, in the future, uh, we are talking about BYOI 
as well as identity as a service. So bring your own identity, uh, federated, bring your own identity, whereby uh, this is the thing that is ongoing now using home organization credential as a proof of real user identity. And of course, uh, we offer uh, the development of Sifulan EID for organization. Uh, we can do it on-prem, we can do partially hosted, and we can also do it fully hosted because we already have a cloud service called Identity as a Service. And uh, I'm talking about Sifulan EID all the time, sorry, Sifulan all the time, and being in the research and education, we do have something similar of utilizing that technology for anything other than research and education. We call it the Runisoft AAI, the Authentication Authorization Infrastructures, utilizing Sifulan technologies for non-research and education. So we do have a total SSO solution that can be installed and used by any organization or even for that matter as an electronic identity of a country. We are doing a POC with one of the country in the Southeast Asia. Uh, and I think we are quite okay, we are moving forward, but these are all something in which we are exploring. Uh, our total SSO solution will work with the, whatever that uh, you have on campus uh, for cars, uh, we have a Google directory service or Azure directory service or even NetIQ. We have not tested NetIQ yet because we do not have a use case uh, of people willing to actually allow us to carry out. But we have done it with cars, of course, Google as well as Azure. And I think we kind of like both Google directory and Azure directory service. And uh, we welcome interest from organization uh for using our federated sso under the proof of concept and this is gratis that means we are doing it for you for free as a fully hosted uh, for the period of three months you can uh look and feel because to me uh using it will, will make you believe so that's it about it for my oss journey uh thank you very much for your one hour time and if you feel like uh, actually contacting me, uh, you can see my email written in big, bold, and red, uh, suhaimi at sifulan.my. Uh, so with that note, I, I thank you very much. Uh, I bring it back to Shazwan. OK, uh, thank you, oh, sorry. Professor Suhaimi. <laughs> no worries, no worries. OK, uh, I uh, thank okay. you for cramping all the years of your OSS journey into a one hour talks. So we have a <laughs> question. We have a question okay. from the uh, floor. If you can uh, okay, okay. see. I, I, I didn't expect question, but if, about technical question, then I'm not able to answer. But if it is no, actually no, no. my it's experience. Not, not is... So the question is, uh, hello, professor, and thank you for your presentation. If you will make a comparison between two timelines, back in 1980 and nowadays do you believe that open source software developments are in good state and where it should be or there's still a lot of work to do a lot of work to do it's a lot of work to do it is a lot and lot a lot of work to do you see um like i mentioned as a scientific community we are very familiar with OSS. We use OSS all the time. But my concern is not in the OSS, in the scientific as well as research community. We are very fine. Uh, should, I should say it. We are quite comfortable and we are quite receptive. It is the people, the enterprise computing, it is the people that we need to educate. So if you compare since 1980 until now, Please, you know, how many of you realize the fact that there are so many OSS initiatives in any government? And what have you achieved now? None. Sorry to say. I have to be very blunt. None. Okay? So, you have a lot of work to do. And I am old. I am, I am going to be 62 years old. And I need younger generation and hopefully my one hour of experience, sorry, of 20, I don't know, 30 years talking about and passionate about open source 
from a non-computer scientist, I hope that it triggers the mind for you to continue fighting. While I still have my breath, I will continue fighting and I'll be with you guys. I'll be with you. Youngest like Izzat, Izzat, you know, he's just have uh, young kids. I am already got three uh, grandchildren already. And my grandchildren is already as even older than Izzat and many others. So okay. please. Yeah. So that is very, very important. I couldn't underline it much and put it in bold, whether you will use latex or whatever. Please continue the struggle. The battle has not been won. Thank you, Doctor, for the first uh, answers. Yeah, of <laughs> course, we will not stop uh, fighting and fight. I mean, uh, eventually, open source. The second question, Doctor, what will you? Uh, what would be your advice to lecturers that still facing the same issue, such as lack of computing power, storage, and bandwidth in conducting research and teaching their students? Oh my God! Oh my God! <laughs> Why? Okay, to tell you quite frankly, ever since the beginning in 1997, 1996, or during my time, unfortunately, yes, I pity myself for not being able to do as much because of the lack of fun, the lack of understanding from the people at the top management. Uh, this is Malaysia, okay? For over 25 years, we have MSC, Super Corridor. We talk about all this blueprint here, blueprint there. What have we achieved? I'm talking about Malaysian. Nothing. Not I, People will say, oh, no, 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 no. But to me, the seven flagship, where is it now? You know, we are still struggling with the bandwidth. We are still struggling with having the lack of compute power. Of course, uh, I shouldn't say this, but I'm quite sure if you remember, I shall not uh, name the, the organization but there was an initiative called Knowledge Grid Malaysia in the year 2008, the same year where I built my own cluster. Okay? They never listened to what we did. We did from scratch. And they actually, from the one, uh, remember later on, they spent 132 million Malaysian ringgit in the year 2008 to build what they term as knowledge grid malaysia and all in all in 2012 gone so I, I i have no answer to that but except to continue fighting please help us okay thank <laughs> <Sorry>. you <laughs> okay i think any uh, question in, is there been any more questions from the floor okay uh so basically yeah even though what you shared i mean i think it's passed beyond our timeline i mean some of the computers we haven't heard and we haven't know but i think at least you give the uh, wiki right so at least we can go and refer back what is that that type of hardware that you have been used so yeah yeah uh, really thanks uh, uh to you for, the, Always a pleasure. Uh, for your one hour uh, and hoping to to uh, to meet you in the next any genome uh, going anytime event. I, yes, anytime. Like I said, you know, uh, as a promotion, uh, you know, uh, a little bit. I'll be very happy to be involved and talk about what we did. And my colleague, or oh, sorry, my my uh, team, Farhan mm -hmm. and everything is ever willing to actually help out. So we are all a, in a community. If I can motivate someone for, uh, and trigger the the minds and the heart. I will be very happy and hopefully uh, you continue this 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 fight. And then for those uh, from Malaysia as well as from Indonesia and others who wishes to actually do a proof of concept on federated single sign on or invited us to actually uh, present to you about our solution, please do so. OK, uh, we are very happy. Uh, but, but of course, you know, we are very happy to share uh okay. okay thank you thank, thank you. you thank, thank you, you. Okay, thank you okay thank you so guys so uh, we already ended our keynote sessions.
So you, uh, we have a break before our next session. So see you guys uh, shortly. Thank you for your time. Uh, for, if, if, during the break, Aizat, if people wish to actually have a chat with me, I, I, I can, I can uh, you know, just maybe stay for five minutes or whatever. I think, uh, yeah, I mean, no? uh, let me see. Because yeah, it's already free, the next free, free, start free, free, free. So maybe uh, we yeah, have oh, to find... Then I... it's okay then. Yeah, okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye. Eh, hey, kau ambil balik session one ke apa ni? All right. Uh, let me... Okay, guys. So we are now back to our next uh, session after a very brief, long keynotes by uh, our, our keynote speaker, Dr. Suhail Minapis. So we are going to pass our session to Bayu Aji. Uh, he will, uh, Bayu Aji will present on how to, how designer prepare to survive post-pandemic era with free open source software. So uh, Mr. Bayu, are you in already? I think as I've already gave your access to present already, if you can hear me. Mr. Bayou. Check, check. Could yep. you hear me? Yep, loud and clear. Okay, I'm currently exporting my uh, presentation so yeah no no worries take, take yep take your time take your time no, no worry so to share a bit about mr bayou he's an illustrator graphic design enthusiast with open source software also he is a member of game inkscape indonesia and also a member of inkscape official facebook group uh, i think I, I i'm guessing you are doing so much in in, in, in inkscape i i think it's, it's both game and inkscape so while we're waiting for Mr. Bayou, I think 
Mr. Bayo is already uploading. Uh, pardon me, uh, I need some minutes to check my presentation. No worries, no worries. Take your time, take your time, take your time. Yes. Uh, okay, uh, okay, no worries. All right, but uh, while we're waiting for Mr. Bayou, uh, we also have a concurrent track running on track two, which is uh, you can report on your mail or I can sh uh, probably share in the link here. Uh, so on track two, they will be talk about exploring open source task queue and implementing one using Postgres and PostgreSQL and Python, which uh, be present, will be present by Mr. Kamal Mustafa. So every, probably anyone who interested on uh, doing a uh, task queue using Postgres and Python can uh, go forward to track. So which is currently, currently started. Also, guys, don't forget to uh, key in your survey, as I already shared the link in the public chat, as requested by our friend uh, Melissa Wu. She, she, she really uh, want to get in touch with us in within the survey form, so feel free to fill up uh, while waiting for our next our next speaker to prepare himself and mr bayou are you okay over there <laughs> i'm still here i'm still here I'm, uh, it's it says it's converting file and processing mm -hmm. file so i'm sorry for you guys for no worries today. Uh, by the way, this is my second time in the Asia Summit. Uh, the previous year, I also present about uh, graphic design related community mm -hmm. at the Escape Circle. And now I'm going to talk about how designer prepare to survive post pandemic era with free open source software. As, uh, All right. One. So as I can see you on your slides already on, so I guess you can take it away. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. How, how should I call you? Shall is one. Ah. As, uh, you can call me one. One. Okay. Thank yep. you one for, for the time and thank you for everyone who's attending uh, Genome Asia Summit 2021. As you see, I present about how designer prepared to survive post pandemic era with free open source software. Okay, this is about me, just like uh, what uh, one have said earlier, I'm a member of uh, Inkscape Indonesia uh, Facebook community, then I'm, I'm also a member of Kimscape ID. Uh, it's, it's not just Kim Inkscape. Uh, previously, it's Kim Inkscape, but now it's uh, it's more like all graphic design uh, software. So Krita and Blender also included there. Then uh, I'm I'm also joined with uh, Plankon Linux uh, developer as our team, and I'm also a graphic designer in Zekuto Studio with some of my friend there. And you could contact me here uh, by email, Facebook, or Telegram. Okay, uh, let's just begin with this simple fact about uh, internet user. Nine in 10 people in the world now use internet. That means 60% of world population is now online. This is based on we are social, 
research and report. Uh, well, it's something we could uh, logically understand because in the pandemic, all activities turn to online. Then this is uh, what I'm about to say about digital work after the pandemic. Uh, this is the data from the we are so and from 7.85 billion uh, people around the world for 0.72 use internet. And we could see here that the average use of the average time spent using internet is six hour and 56 minutes. It, it's the average for someone, uh, for people like us, maybe you use uh, force uh, or or in uh, mostly in laptop, in front of laptop or a screen might be more than this. But this is the average number. And 62.8% use a uh, mobile device. So we're like every day in front of our gadget, our phone, our uh, tablet, and so on. And this is about graphic design after the pandemic. Okay, this is the first point, the COVID pandemic, come with migration of activities from offline to online. This is uh, understandable, and I'm sure we all know about this. And we feel it, how, how we have to limit our offline activities, how we have to limit our uh, distance with other people. And so we turn to online activities. And then we will see the competition in drawing attention turn to online event or activities. People focus on the phone, people focus on internet. So whether that's from social or commercial uh, side, they seek to draw attention in online activities. That makes increase in graphic design needs and increase in brand awareness. Uh, we could say that a company that previously uh, don't really care about the brand or the graphic design because the profit is high, now will we'll think other, or will consider the graphic design side because they can't promote things without graphic design. They can just use uh, simple word processing software and then make the poster by just typing white, uh, black and white like that. That that would be not uh, interesting. So people need graphic design more. And here uh, will of course will increase uh, graphic design course. Uh, some some graphic uh, some course uh, will uh, some people will will make the graphic design course and then that's that's made to supply the need for graphic design and the result is increase of new graphic designer other than that we all we also know maybe we're one of them the sudden designer phenomenon you know some people just use the the easy or the the template like a taken from like uh, uh, just a free pick or using Canva. Then because they could use the that software or because they can modify the template, they, they say well they will say, hey, I'm a designer. You could order from me you could just ask my service just like that that, that would be a little a little funny because yeah 
practically they could use it. They could be uh, called graphic designer, but uh, they maybe uh, they don't know the basic or the fundamental of uh, being a graphic designer. But that uh, sudden designers also uh, got profit and have customers. So its existence is is there. And then, so it makes the competition is tight for, for the old world or early because there is new designer, new graphic designer, and new Saturn designers. Now, uh, we're talking about uh, how to survive after. Uh, in post pandemic era because in post pandemic we will see the graphic design might be some common uh, skill for a lot of people and uh, people uh, willing to learn learn about uh, graphic design so if we are talking about uh, in in marketing side we could say the 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 supply someday will exceed the, the demand. And so that makes uh, uh, maybe the price of uh, design service will, will, will lowering and it could affect another thing. This is what I uh, could say for how to survive this, uh, how to keep surviving after the pandemic, I have five points here. Uh, I'm I'm sorry. Uh, the last one is is included reviews. So be different. Stay with community. Collaborate with fellow designer and use additional tools and extension by community. I'm sorry for the mistype because um, I'm in a hurry for preparing the uh, slides before. Okay. The first one is be different. Be different here. I mean, with uh, general means. Uh, the first one is different in style. You could say that years ago, a uh, style like a uh, flat design is very popular and increasing. The 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 demand of it is increasing. And. Uh, years after that still uh, people still like uh, flat design but uh, now people might uh, like uh, want to want to want to ask for 3d uh, any uh, 3d illustration or something like that with uh, different in style is you need to learn something different from from other people the increasing uh, of of demand means yeah means that's popular people like it like this like the style uh, currently like the style talking about flat design maybe uh, in the time people will like uh, flat design and the uh, demand for it is really really high but you have to be prepared do to be prepared you need to learn something else because if the style the flat design is be being common, it's become common and people will not ask for it. People will ask for something else, another style. So you have to prepare with other style because if you only could do the flat design, you will get nothing if, if the flat design become not popular again. So you have to prepare with an another style. You have to learn another style. The second one is a uh, different product. In terms of uh, social media use, now one of uh, highest demand for uh, graphic in graphic design is uh, social media uh, poster or feed. Uh, I don't say that you should not uh, focus on that. It's okay to focus on that because the demand is high, so you have to be in there to to be able to make 
uh, an interesting and attracting uh, social media feed, but you will need to learn about something else. It's just similar to the style point. You need to learn about another another product like uh, maybe brochure or UI, UX, and something other. The third one is the segment. You could focus on another on specific segment. Maybe student, maybe a company, or some uh, personal who's trying to uh, sell stuff or a, a seller, distributor, or like that. Just try to uh, identify another segment that's not quite uh, focused by another designer. The third one is different in software. Uh, the last point here is uh, to be unique, to be different with, with other people. This is one of the example for different software I've used than my usual software. I made this one with uh, LibreOffice Draw. It's more difficult to draw this than Inkscape, but in terms of being different, you could be some unique person by doing this, this, this difficult, difficult thing. Maybe you've, you've known something, uh, someone, as I recall it, uh, a Japanese that uh, draw an art with a uh, split sheet software. I, I don't know when, when is the exact years, but that's around five to 10 years ago. That's Japanese that made an, an illustration with a split sheet software. And then that's, that's interesting. The next one is join the community. You could join the community uh, to be specific here, the graphic design community, so that you could get uh, motivation, support, and insight from another uh, designer. One of the, uh, the biggest uh, post graphic open source in a uh, force graphic community in Indonesia is Kimscape. And you could see that uh, their work are quite cool. And then the next one is the non-graphic design community. You could join them to, well, still, even if you, you're focused on graphic design, you could join the non-graphic design to practice and to use your graphic design skill. Here is the example of my artworks for Blank on Linux. Uh, it's, it's in, It's what I could do to support the development of uh, Blank on Linux by just making the wallpaper and the t-shirt design, the merchandise, because I don't know how to develop it in the other way. I don't know how to support it the other way. So uh, this is what I could do to uh, support the community. And it's interesting to to make your skill uh, useful and that makes you glad. And then the next one is, yes. Oh yeah, I forgot to to mention the point here. The, the point here is adding additional or ex extension, additional tool or extension made by community. It's related to the previous graphic design community. This is one of, uh, tools made by developers. Uh, one of them is uh, Rania Amina, Sofian Sugianto, and uh, Nukuru Hodwi. Uh, this is used to remove uh, image background. It's really uh, useful for people who focus on uh, product promotion. 
sometimes we need to remove uh, some backgrounds uh, from the product. Uh, call it maybe uh, here the example is uh, the shoes, maybe uh, string, a packaging. Sometimes the photo have a uh, background, and we if we edit one or two, that might not take a lot of time. But if our photos are like uh, hundreds, maybe that will take time. So this tool is very useful to remove the background. And the result is very smooth. And maybe you need to uh, use that. One of you who haven't tried, maybe you could try that. The other one is, uh, this is Citramanic, also developed by uh, community. By uh, same with uh, by developers too. This is used to uh, export uh, image in multiple format and uh, multiple uh, objects. This is uh, mostly used uh, for for someone who uh, focus on Microsoft. You could use that to export in multiple formats so that you don't need to take uh, your waste your time to export one by one these are these two are examples of uh, additional tools made by community and that will support how you work with your graphic design software and in this and this uh, case Citramonic used to support uh, file and the subplotter could provide to support uh, the use of Inkscape and GIMP too. And then the last is, but not least, collaborate with fellow designer. Uh, because the competition is tight, you could yeah, you can you can fight alone, but they will exhaust you. That will make you just very very tired because now the now is the era of collaboration, and other people collaborate. So if you don't collaborate, you will be uh, I got, I don't think you will lose, but you will be difficult to catch them up. So you have to collaborate too. And as first user, you have to collaborate too with your fellow designer. You could collect some graphic designer, illustrator, or web developer, or maybe animator uh, to, to make a, a group of uh, design and multimedia surface. Here uh, is me and uh, my team here at uh, Zex Studio we check the portfolio if you have time maybe we over uh, graphic design and web development as surface so uh, for some of you who don't know what force to use uh, or what force we are using it's uh, Inkscape the first one is for graphic design of course you use uh, we use Inkscape it's uh, very useful to make logo, poster, illustration, icons, and brochure. Also, the other stuff, maybe you could design something like banner or, or mock up to. One is from one of Gimscape member. The next one is Kim. It's mainly used for image manipulation, but you could make poster too. You could edit or retouch image, and you could make illustration with this software. This one's also made by a uh, Gimscape member. And you could use Blender too for 3D modeling animation and also illustration this one right here uh, just looks like illustration but it's 
it, it seems like made with Inkscape, but if you look closely, it's 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 made by uh, Blender. And what I really need uh, to remind everyone who want to be a designer is that the software you use doesn't really matter. It's your ability to use it that matters. You could check uh, to, to the official site of three softwares I've mentioned uh, uh, before, the Inkscape, Gim, and Blender. You could check the, the official website. You will see a lot of wonderful and awesome work. And some of them may, will make you uh, don't believe it. Like, are you sure it's made by Inkscape or you say it's made by Kim or Blender? Yeah, that's it. So the important thing is how you use it. And we we also know if all the for software has has maybe has the the minus or what what do you call it with the the lack of feature than the proprietary but by using the tools provided by community you could you could patch you could keep up with the 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 lack of the uh, feature like subplotter and and uh, Chitramanic are example of uh, tools that very useful to support the use of Inkscape and Kim. And then to conclude what uh, I've talked so far, well, I'm sure you could conclude it all because it's, it's not really uh, difficult to understand. But the main point here is uh, be creative and stay aware because creativity is important to adapt and the way we do our daily activities and being creative means we are constantly trying to create new things new innovation and new ways of uh, responding to something to make our activities easier and staying aware is always aware of the things around us both near and far in our area or country or in the world so the ability to understand what is happening will enable us to predict what might happen or it in the future okay that's all i could say uh, thank you and special thanks for Genome Asia Summit organizer, sponsor, and uh, community partner. Maybe if hey. one of you or uh, have something to share and to us, uh, feel free to ask to me. Thank you, Bayu, for your presentation. Uh, by the way, we have uh, uh, we have one question uh, that someone left for you. So if you can refer on share note, and I can just read it out loud. Are uh, the graphic design costs of value uh, of value to instant? For I mean, I, I think the question is: Is the graphic design design courses is value to instant designer? For example, who are illustrating a project but is a professional. So, what do you think? Uh, okay. I think it's uh, still valuable because uh, nowadays, sometime we need to something what 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 we learn uh, isn't always be useful at this time. Maybe it will be useful uh, the other time. So by having uh, more skills, it's it's still useful. But uh, if if you want to 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 be part of uh, if you want to
join the, the, the graphic designer community, or maybe you want to be focused on graphic design community, you need to be uh, fo focused. You need to learn more and not, not just learn one or two new things, but learn and learn more so you, you will be have more ties than other people. Right, so I think I guess the short word the short word for your explanation is uh keep trying, don't give up. <laughs> right? yes. That's what I mean. Okay. So Mr. Bayu, thanks for your time in our 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 Jerome Asia uh, summit for this year. Hopefully we'll uh, you you submit more paper uh, for next year, hopefully. Okay. <laughs> All right. So I guess uh, we are uh, we are done with it. Uh, again, Mr. Bayu. Thank you. Okay. So, thank you so much. Uh, all right. So we will move to our next presentation, which is uh, just right on not just right. So yeah, probably uh, three minutes away. Uh, let me find um, Sammy Fung. So Sammy, are you in here already? Uh, yes. Yes, Sammy. So, all right. I just made you as the presenter. I think you are free. You are free to make a preparation for yourself. So, how's the condition there, Sammy? Oh, I think he's trying to find something. So, while waiting, Sammy is. Uh, actually, a on the, uh, our Genome Asia member team, which is really active uh, three, uh, since way before uh, in Malaysia, and uh, I think I can say from stop from 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 the start. So, uh, Sammy will uh, Sammy will uh, present the career op opportunities. From open source contributions, so I guessing you are you are you ready, Sammy? Yeah, I am. Yeah, I am uploading the uh, file. I'm now waiting for the conversions on BBB. Yeah. Aha. Uh -huh. All right. So it's not. Yeah. Um, okay. okay. Yes. Uh, all right. So. All right. Yeah. So uh, get uh, take it away. So, may I start now? Okay. Yep, you are start. Yeah. So today, uh, I would like to uh, share uh, one of the topics, which actually I I I shared to I shared to uh, share on a uh, technology conference because usually I will share something related to Python, something related to a uh, web scraping data engineering. But this time, I would like to share a soft topic, which I would like to uh, talk about the um, the career opportunity from uh, open source contributions in uh, this summit, because uh, I would like to see uh, more um, more contributors in Asia. So, um, so this is why I I, I submit this uh, proposals. So, uh, so my name is Sammy Fomes. I uh, have uh, over uh, 20 years experience in open source software and uh, information technology. And I am the founder of, of uh, uh, Open Source Hong Kong, uh, Hong Kong Open Source Conference and PyCon Hong Kong. And I am also uh, the Genome Asia Committee Lead as well and also i i involved in other uh, open source um community like um Bozilla and uh, python software foundations i am one of the uh, contributing members and i am also um acm professional member as well and um uh, and, and, and 20 years ago i start to uh develop some uh, program uh, which to um, pro provide uh, uh, invoicing system to the uh, 
uh, car service company in Hong Kong. So uh, it was uh, when I was a um, uh, college, uh, college student. Yeah. So uh, this presentation that uh, I would like to uh, uh, tell you that are uh, joining and contributing uh, open source and bonus for uh, your for, for your career for your career and it's also a bonus for career opportunity as well. So uh, about the open source contributions, so this is the first thing I would like like, like to tell tell you about uh, what is open source contributions. So if you think uh, 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 how I should contribute to open source, usually people will uh, think, or oh, I should develop some uh, open source software for the uh, other peoples. But actually it's not just for the coding. So, I've, so uh, from my experience, uh, open source com contribution actually uh, uh, this uh, depends to to uh, two uh, com two components. Yes, uh, they are community and collaborations. So why I would like to say uh, uh, yes, a community because when you join the with you uh, join the um, the uh, uh, IT uh, event outside the open source com community actually you will join a lot of uh, trade show uh, 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 exhibition something like that and it's uh, mainly for the uh, bis uh, for, for the business uh, level thing. so it's all about the business if you would like to uh, learn more about the technology you would like to share about the technology so you should join some uh, academic um uh conference for the uh, it just like uh, uh acm conference i triple e conference but uh but but be, before you join uh, those conference you should become a uh, a members of those uh those uh, technology organizations but for the open source you can just join the open source community and in your city or in your country, and then you can look at one uh, any uh, existing uh, uh, open source community and events in your city in your country. So uh, the difference between the uh, uh, traditional IT events and open source events is that uh, you can meet people and and do some do a lot of uh, leveling with uh, other people even the speaker, even the participants in the, uh, in the uh, open source uh, community e event. So it's not just a trace of MS users. And the second thing is that, is that uh, is the, uh, we, we, we spend a lot about the collaborations. So, uh, so because the, uh, the, the internet is, exists in the world, so we can communicate with uh, any uh, any other people in English to uh, 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 around the world. So that um, so with you uh, develop some uh, open source soft software or you use some open source software, you can uh, uh, com commit your work and serve uh, any uh, any people, any companies in the world through the internet. When you use uh, open source software, you can also uh, get support from the internet. So you can ask questions on, uh, 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 just like, for example, uh, stack of, uh, 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 stack of a phone, and then maybe you can get the uh, uh, su uh, support from, uh, from the other side of the, the earth, something like that. So, uh, so uh, about the uh, open source contribution, the first thing you, uh, uh, you can do is that you can uh, learn, meet, and share. 
So, uh, so you can start from creating your give account and look at one any interesting project which you are interested to uh, use or contribute, and then you can looking for several uh, technology community on web or in your city, and then you can join join them and share uh, uh, the uh, open source topic you are interested. In. And the uh, meeting is about the technology skill and people as well. And you can learn a new skill from the community. And also, um, uh, you can uh, share your learning with others, just like with you uh, use um, uh, open source software, and then you can share on your blog or report or documentations to uh, share how, how you uh, try this uh, open source software, uh, 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 any tips for them, for the little bees, something like that. Because you assume that this are uh, over millions uh, open source pro project around the world. So uh, I think uh, many of them doesn't have uh, documentation. So this is why uh, this is helpful to uh, help others to get start with uh, the open source software you use. So this is the, uh, one of the first, uh, one of the uh, open source contribution you can do. And also you, you can share with uh, other people in your uh, local community, just like uh, uh, use the group, something like that. So, uh, so, I, so I copy some, um, some sharing from the internet. So uh, just like uh, uh, th uh, this contributor uh, shared that uh, he actually uh, don't do any real work on the uh, CocoaPox tools itself. Actually, he spent a lot, well, most of his time doing things like documentations, like working on the banding. Another showing from uh, from another uh, contributor is that uh, he actually reached out the Python uh, development team or Melanie's and that accept his patch, and then uh, he decided to uh, start to do some email digest for the group because. Just like for genome, for just like for Python, this kind of big uh, open source project, actually, uh, you, you maybe have a lot of uh, uh, email coming to to the uh, mailing list. So, um, so he he share his experience that he do some uh, email digest for the com community. So, um, so other kind of uh, long coding contributions is that you can organize uh, meetings, a uh, conference for the, for the project, and you can looking for the uh, meetings and conference, and then su suggest uh, some open source contributor to submit their speaking proposal. Just like we organized the Genome Asia Summit this year, actually we are we are we are always a uh, a uh, lack of uh proposal submitted. So we always extend the uh, our call for proposals period. So with with you can share uh, uh, this kind of um, uh, CFP uh, to uh, 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 other uh, open source contributor, it will be helpful for them to uh, to share their contributions to others. So you can also um, uh, contribute in design as well, just like uh, helping some uh, UI uh, in, uh, improvement, uh, designing new, uh, logo and teaser as well. Just like one of one of the contribute uh, one of the volunteers in Hong Kong in my in my com community, he doesn't know how to cop how to do some cop cop name, but he is a great in initiator. Uh, in our com community, so he designed some of our teas as well. Um, uh, so you can uh, also check out the uh, step uh, overflow discussion forums to help 
uh, the community to answer some questions as well. So with Unite Coding, so you can uh, try, you, you can uh, log in into uh, the uh, open source project to find out any uh, open issue to, to tackle. And also uh, you can, um, you can write a new feature as well, or you can develop some part in add on extension for the project. Just uh, just like Gilon, you can you, you can write some Gilon extension as well, and you can uh, do some uh, uh, backend support as well. Just like you can you can help the developer to uh, write some um, CIC CD script as well to do the continuous con uses in integration something like that so yes a lot of things you can help and um, also you can uh if you like to help uh, uh, others to come you can uh review the coding from the other people's submissions you can help the uh why the total, total view as well or mental and other contributor as well to tell tell uh, just like what's the core content of this community. So how you to find the uh, project or community to contribute? So uh, you can, the, the first thing I think you should look, in, you should look at the GitHub and then look, look at the, the uh, project responsibility to find out any open source li license because uh, uh, open source software to include an uh, open source license uh, 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 files. And um, just to check out uh, when was the last co com commit and how often do the people com commit and how many contributors does the project have, something like that. So you can find, you can find out whether this project is active or not, something like that. So uh, how do, how do you go visioning yourself to a new project and community? So the first thing you should understand the community uh, sub structure, just like their team team structure, uh, who is the uh, manager, who is the owner, so, something like that, and their re re responsibility. So you can so it will help you to find the right person to to say hi and and communicate with them to see what you can help. And you can also look at, look for the documentation or the top level of responsibility as well, just like the uh, uh we may follow contributing follow and core content, and also you can check out the issue checker something like that and discussion for one mailing list. Uh, so from my experience, so I start coding uh over twenty years ago uh coding in some uh, long open source programming language like uh, basic Cobo Pascal to do some uh, freelance during my college time and also I operate a dark BBS and when when I have my own dark BBS and, and some of my BBS users upload the uh, limits to my BBS uh, um, system so this how I learn uh, Linux is existing in the world. So after I join, I joined the internet. So I found out the Linux community, and and also because uh because I I joined the Linux community, and so uh this one of a bonus that to help help me to to uh to to get my first job uh, after uh college. And then when I joined my first company, I start to uh, do some uh, programming uh, with Pell, PHP, and now Py in Py Python. And over ten years ago, I start blogging as well. To to uh, usually I I share uh, uh, how to use Linux, how to uh, use uh, some open source software instead of proprietary software. And then uh, social network is uh, is big uh, big uh, becomes more popular. So I so I also share on social network. And in this year, I also do some uh, reblogging as well to uh, to, to to publish some uh, video on YouTube as well. 
So, uh, so I create my GitHub uh, over 10 years, and, and I put some of my open source uh, WebScaper or Python screen or something like that on my GitHub. And it surprised me that given small open source uh, project, I will, I will also get some, uh, some uh, inputs and patch from others. Just like I developed a uh, uh, Hong Kong weather data web scraper. It, it's just uh, a project for Hong for Hong Kong data, but I got a uh, patch from from a uh, university lecturer in 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 United States. So it's uh, very interesting for me. So you can see that um uh yes uh some uh, uh, global interactions on project and also you will get some uh, opportunity. So uh, another my sharing is that um, uh, uh, I, I, I start the Open Source Hong Kong. Yes, uh, you can say it's a committee or it's an organization in, in Hong Kong. We organize uh, meetings and then uh, after we uh, successfully organize uh, Genome Asia Summit in in Hong Kong in 2012, so we we organized a, a, a local conference as well. So uh, yes, a lot of things to do to uh, contribute to the community. So it's just like a planning call for call for Berlin speakers, sponsors, uh, do some marketing and some also operations. So uh, we also are uh, 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 early uh, organizer of uh, local hackathons in Hong Kong. So we also share our experience to uh, other tech organizations in Hong Kong how to organize uh, startup hackathons. And also sometimes we receive some invitations to set up a community booth in commercial exhibition as well. And just um, sometimes uh, I receive a speaking opportunity as well, just like uh, this presentation is actually is this, this part of uh, this, this come from uh, 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 one of the uh, sharing to the university uh, student two weeks ago. And then I add more content to, uh, to this uh, presentation. So the, uh, the third uh, um, sharing about my experience is uh, Genome Asia. So I, I just mentioned that we successfully organized uh, Asia, uh, Genome Asia Submit in 2002 in Hong Kong, and then because oh we can we can organize a regional conference in Hong Kong. Why don't we uh, organize a smaller uh, scale conference in Hong Kong? So so this this why we uh, start the, so I start the uh, Hong Kong Open Source Conference in 2013, and then uh, start the PyCon Hong Kong in uh, 2015. So, um, and after I complete the uh, Genome Asia Summit, um, I, I also invite, uh, they invited me to join the uh, Genome Asia Committee as well to help uh, other city to organize the genome you know, submit in their city, just like in Seoul, in Beijing, in Taipei, etc. So the second thing I would like to talk about is the career opportunity. If you did not join the uh, open source community, if you did not contribute to the open source community. So you just have your university de uh, degree in uh, for the uh, major in, in IT or some professional certifications, but with you have uh, your own co contribution in the open source com com community. So it's a big add on to the to your resume something like that because uh, it's all practical skill instead of some uh, some. Uh, some field theory. So, uh, yes, I, I think open source contribution is a career opportunity for you being uh, an employee or or a startup owner, something like that. 
um, um, for the uh, M, M, for the M, the employee, so you can add more uh, open source uh, contributors to your CV to to show your actual skill to potential employers. And for the start um, um, owner, some company own, owner is a good marketing strategy for you to extend your technology solution. Just like uh, for Linux and Git, so you can find uh, this about uh, multiple uh, Linux vendors uh, in the world. Just like uh, Ubuntu, Red Hat, uh, uh, Susi, something like that. Some, some, something like that. And for Git, so so you can long you you just long that we have a uh, GitHub, we have GitLab, and we have a uh, uh, Pipercat. So you can see uh, uh they can uh, add the um the uh the uh the uh the uh the uh, 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 string to uh to the uh, open source project. Um, for uh web pass, so you can see that they have uh built a uh, good ecosystems. In, uh, uh, offer the open source pro project. So it's a uh, many uh, as uh, uh, add ons. It's a uh, pay add on or free add ons. So you can find that um, uh, people can uh, can uh, develop add ons in the uh, web web ecosystem. So they can also uh, earn money as well. For the Scapy, Scapy is a uh, this uh, open source. Uh, uh uh web scaping framework so uh the uh developer uh this uh, company so the company uh is also the service provider of uh uh web scaping uh technology as well so this is how they can uh uh, uh attract and and do some marketing thing for their uh, uh, uh service and solutions um in these two years one of our friends one of our open source friends in taiwan they also uh, set up a uh, uh, machine learning op uh, uh ml ops they use uh, open cores uh, uh model to uh process their uh, business Um also you can also are uh, looking at the uh job board of on the uh, Genome Foundation website, so you can find out actually if you contribute to Genome, you can also uh, join uh, different uh, company as well. Just like I just uh, quickly look at the job board, there are some positions from OpenSUSE, from uh, Canonical, uh, the, the developer of the Ubuntu, and also Dell. Uh, and also so some other company as well. So you can find with with you uh, do some contributions to Genome, you can also uh, get uh, some opportunity in your career. So I will finish in five uh, this presentation in five minutes. And so um, to start the open source contributions. To looking for more career opportunity, so uh, you should uh, uh, create your GitHub and also uh, do more uh, uh, contributions uh, to your open source uh, project or other open source project or GitHub, and you can also join the community and also list your uh, open source contribution experience uh, in your LinkedIn as well. So some some potential uh, employers will looking for uh, some uh, people with uh, with open source uh, skill set on LinkedIn. So I I cannot say that I receive uh, just uh, this kind of uh, job uh, uh, alert on LinkedIn every week, but at least uh, every two to three three weeks. Yeah. So, uh, so in this p p in this presentation, I share uh, 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 why joining and contributing in open source is a bonus for uh, career opportunity. 
and uh, you can contact me if you have uh, any follow up or uh, if you have uh, if you would like to uh, looking for some mentor something like that or something uh, I can help your com community so you can comment contact me uh, for the email to send me phone at genome.org or uh, you can uh, uh, you can follow my Twitter as well as semi phone and also I have a uh, for in English, uh, semi fun dot com or my Chinese boss semi and also uh, 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 our com organization uh, Open Source Hong Kong have a website Open Source dot hk. Thanks for your time. So let me check out um uh, uh, any uh, question on yes you have question semi yeah. So uh, I, I think I, I read it out. Uh, what is the difference, if any, due to staying anonymous while contributing on career prospect? So what do you think about that? Uh, so I think that people should um, should, uh, should, uh, should, uh, should 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 do contributions in uh, anonymous. <laughs> yeah, because. Um, because just like my contributions, I I actually use my real name, and also with the people uh 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 call my projects to their local machine. Actually, they can they can check out my uh real email as well. <laughs> yeah, so it's quite fun funny. Yeah. Yeah, I understand that some people will uh will use uh alias uh to uh come to commit their source code and also have a uh, alias name on their GitHub profile. But but I think um but I think uh if you would like to some potentials uh, employers or some potential partner to contact you and Mm. who you are, you should uh, use your real, uh, real name. Yeah, agree. Then with that, Good. actually, uh, on that question, I actually I'm start to use my alias first. Then, um, but my my alias is still still stick with me, so I'm fine with it. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> so, Sammy, I think uh, we don't have any question. I think this is the the wrap for your session. So, I uh, I guess. <laughs> Thank you for your time uh, to share with us your thoughts on career, this career opportunity. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for your whole yeah. whole <laughs> All right. So I think we will uh, go for our next uh, session, which is will be hosted by our friend Oliver Props. Oliver, I think I guess you are already in here. Make sure you enable your mic uh, to, uh, this, this time. Can you hear me, Oliver? Uh, no, I, I, think, I don't think you enable your mic because you are still uh, putting your hips phone icon. Uh, Click, click the mic, Oliver. Can you click it? I think Oliver is trying to restart this session in web uh, in his browser but while waiting uh oliver will be uh do talk on computing and genome uh the connect so he will share on computing uh p3 as do with genome by now so yep i think i can yeah. hear you yes cool so i think you can uh can you upload your slide in dvd yeah all right Ooh. All right. So I think I guess if you already, I I think you're now audio ready. 
video ready. Now we're waiting for your slide to be ready. Then I think, I guess you can take it away. Right. Uh, so. Mm, right. So I, I thought actually there was some some way I could screen sh um, um, share the screen, but it doesn't seem. Supposedly yes, but you need to uh, uh, there's a browser uh, permission you need to uh, allow first. Hey Oliver, um, at the bottom of the screen, you can see near the microphone icon, you can see the option to, uh, to share the screen. On the left. Yeah. 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 Now I, I got here. Uh, 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 I think, but, but this one, I think, is the different, this one is different slide. Now I will. Can I help you on that? Yeah. So uh, let's see. Yes. Uh, now here, here, here now. Oh, there, 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 there is processing the the file right yes. now. Yes. All right, so okay, so we can see your slide. So take it away. Yeah, so right, so <laughs> yeah. Oops, I think we lost. Uh, we lost uh, yeah, Oliver. Yeah, there is a slide, right? Yeah, so, Oliver. Now, now, now we got it finally. Okay, so, let right. me make you present it again. Right, so my name is Oliver Probst, and here is a picture of the. I want to first say I'm very thankful for being able to to present here at the Asia Summit. Uh, it's a great honor. Um, so here is actually um, a view of the first computing device from China, uh, which actually the Abacus, which is a device which was. Uh, available around 200 years before the born of uh, Christ. So this is the first computing device ever invented in China, in Asia. And here, if we go forward a few hundred, fast forward a few hundred years, we have something more familiar. They like the more modern computing begin to take shape, as you can see in this, in this picture. Uh, like the com so the this common device was invented in the West, but uh, it's this it's the same same principle uh, as this com this first computing device, which is to help humans doing calculations basically. Just and the, so this is a more modern form, but still it's not not feels pre not feels advanced now and. <laughs> Uh, but uh, but doesn't feel ad an advance right now. And here is the eighties. So we have got this uh, computer device, which is more familiar to to what the computer looks today. But obviously, the hardware is not as powerful. This would this device does not allow to do the advanced things that we that that modern technology and computing devices does. But it's still more advanced than than. Uh, oops, sorry. Uh, uh, but it's still more advanced than this device. 
Uh, so now let's get forward a, a few additional years and the GNOME project is invented, invented in 1997 by the co-founder <laughs> and the lovely person Frederico, um, um, which and Miguel. So the, the GNOME project was invented by two persons. It's, um, and fast forward, so some work is done with the GNOME project, uh, which and JTK, which you can see the logo and the programming language for. And then some more work is done. And so within GNOME, work is associated with different things like uh, programming and, uh, and the C language. And then more work is done. Some more is work is done and additional work is done. And this is a little bit more point that I think that GNOME can, and, and the GNOME community and, and like general efforts is like um, a group of people who's dedicated and doing coordinated work and, and really doing their best to, to push things uh, uh, forward in a, in, a, in a collaborative way. Just like the construction working uh, worker is working very hard to build buildings, like the GNOME community is uh, focused, uh, have always been focused on, uh, on like uh, building uh, this software stack, which allow this free and open source software stack, which allow people to interact with the computer and uh, different uh, useful things and providing this uh, software. But additionally to the like work, which is mainly code the, that's shaping up the, the, the actual programs, which makes up the GNOME project. Um, the GNOME project, which all the work which resulted in, in, in the more than version of GNOME and uh, GNOME, GNOME 3 specifically, as can be seen by this screenshot. So, but it's also about not just work, but it's also about the community, right? Like the interaction with different people and, and the Asia community, because like, as I stated before, like the first computing device was actually invented in Asia. And, and now we have this Asia summit where, where they're like, obviously Asia is an in, like have been an import, important part of the GNOME project and the Asia community. Um, driving some innovations and uh, we have these gatherings <laughs> like this gathering the asia summit which is uh, like a um, testament to the importance of, of the asia continent and uh, and the commitment and you know in asia we have this we, there is this community experience experience as as well that people are working together in a very orderly manner to to create things and and and, and really there's a group things as a community things it's just not one person but it is interaction and uh, and this which inspires people and um, to do good things really um, and so I think gnome is, is it's to a degree a project about love and uh, I mean and contributing both code work in that sense but also to the people testament to that uh, really so the gnome project really loves both code and people and and this interaction and, and excitement uh, with technology which is a motivated factors and, and I think uh, drives innovation in a good in, in a sense really and I think also it's like a phoenix bird which really the gnome project even despite there is some challenges it's really managed to to overcome these challenges and and rise to different challenges which uh, which uh, occurs like a bird so really and so, yeah, and then so now I just have 15 minutes only because, uh, but I also, so I want to thank you for taking time and listening to this short presentation uh, as I did not, as, as it, yeah. And I really can also, also there's Sunday today and, and, and this is a flag of my country and uh, it's as a cross and, and I think, uh, I, I hope it will, protect everyone from from evils and uh, and that we can can live in a in a good mood together and, and do 
great things together. Not, not today, but also tomorrow and, uh, and long term. I, I, I think we can maybe even pray for that if you want to have a more religious tone to that. So, yeah, that's what I want to say to now. And I really wish you a, a, a good Sunday. And, uh, and, uh, and, I, and I hope that we will be able to work together uh, for a long time, hopefully. Um, I pray for that. So thank you for taking time to listening and maybe we will have we will be able to see each other again and hear from each other at some other point. So thank you Oliver for your kind of strong speech in the end. Hopefully we will meet in not not like uh currently we're doing. We, we probably we can uh do some uh eating and dancing and everything physically rather than do this uh, this virtual event and not mean that virtual is not really that intended to uh to communicate to commu uh, to make a communication for other people but it's different when we are doing physical right yeah yeah exactly i i i very much agree so i very much again want to thank you for allowing me to presenting this so yeah thanks thank, thank you for your time to present because after after yesterday issue but yeah, you are here yeah, today sorry about that so yeah we are, we are really thanks. No, as, sorry. A, as an organizer i'm really appreciate you, you you can take your time and you can share your your, your insight on this uh on your on this issue okay thank you very much i feel pretty pretty okay also so um i hope that we uh, you know we have some communications online also and i hope we will continue to have this and maybe see each other some sometime again in the real world i for that so i, I really wish everyone okay. everyone yeah okay thank you oliver yeah. bye yeah bye thank you oliver All right, folks. So while you guys waiting, I think uh, on track two is we've already started our our session there, uh, talking about Japanese script in GNOME. So if you are interested on how Japanese, uh, not Japanese, Javanese, uh, Javan, uh, Javanese uh, script been uh, written in the uh, GNOME itself do uh, jump over to track two so for this track luckily i am the last speaker <laughs> to present to you let me uh, set it up my presentation first so Oh, say me. Don't, don't say that. I'm, you, make me, you make me nervous, you know? You make me nervous. All right, so we had to be... Okay, this one. this one oh yeah hello okay so uh good evening for those who are in, in uh, malaysian time gnt plus eight and also i think in utc it's supposed to be at what time let me check for quick one quick round one the the the, the probably it's already uh afternoon if i'm no it's 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 good morning so good morning uh hi everyone so i'll be the last presenter for this strike one session so uh hopefully now before i start uh, my session hopefully you guys uh enjoying your time uh this weekend uh for second day of second day in uh let me yep yep, yep okay so uh hopefully you are enjoying our session for the second day uh also don't uh, don't forget to let me find the link again so don't forget to uh fill in 
survey form that Melinda uh, that yep so uh, yep so Melissa shared with us uh, this morning or uh, this afternoon okay time so keep free to uh, fill in so yeah uh, for my session today uh, for my session right now I'm be sharing on how open source change uh, my life so basically before we start so why is it not changing all right now so my name is Azwan so you can call me one uh, so I don't know why the urban legend dictionary state my name as a very good man uh, I guess I'm a very good man I don't know you decide it so but being Shazwan is great yeah you, I think I think I can agree on that but so basically I'm doing uh, sysadmin uh, not yet not sysadmin mainly I'm doing uh, personally uh, uh, professionally I'm doing uh, uh, consulting on technology in uh, in servers uh, and related servers web servers uh, story servers database server you got you, you name it uh, except for windows servers i'm not working on that so this is my uh, my work photo which i'm i think this is was back in 2000 i can't remember 2012 uh, yeah I, I i i think back then uh, 2010 2011 or 2012 so uh just to make sure just to prove to you uh i'm i'm certified so this is my certification but it's already expired but uh well at least i at least i got certification so this is my this is technically my uh, proof to you that i'm certified so uh yeah this is me uh, lying down i'm kind of uh, passionate in photography uh, basically uh, i'm because due to pandemic i can't really took photo so much but yeah some of uh, my some of my uh, most of my passion are really in photography so yeah uh, and I, I like to mind to share to you with my some of my photo here and the other one and another one yeah that's all my photo so before we start uh yeah actually uh, I, I, I actually before before we start because eventually you don't don't even know me so maybe i i'm i'm let i'm letting to explain on my uh what you call my 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 uh my my ground start or if you can score ground start so here one in the beginning I, mean, I, I always mispronounce the, the, uh, the beginning. So uh, I'm actually from uh, Malaysia, uh, living in Johor, which is southern part next to Singapore. So everyone to Singapore in Singapore, hello. A uh, few kilometers away, uh, around 300 kilometers away from uh, Kuala Lumpur City Centre. And yeah, life is very good in Johor here. Uh, so I'm enjoying being here since I'm, 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 I'm being a kid uh yeah uh cannot, i think i cannot uh cannot say more but i'm young so if you cannot figure out this is me uh so back in when i'm a uh, childhood i'm kind of like uh, a very enthusiastic in enthusiast with not just computer but something uh automatic like remote con uh, remote control because remote control is sort of like something that uh, robotic remote control uh, some uh, electronics uh, and not le I mean not leaving anything computer because computer is I can say computer is uh, computer is my whole life uh, I've been I've been doing computer since uh, I'm seven but I'm I'm playing with my first computer not not my, my not my computers but my uh, my uh, my auntie's computers, uh, which is back in ninety five. Uh, uh, I'm five years old, so you know. I I guess you are figuring out my age right now. So I'm five years old uh, at the time. Uh, then uh, uh, after I think after two years or three years, uh, I've owned uh, not my not I'm own computer, but my family. My my father's bought a computer for us to 
be experienced back in home because probably he just to uh, uh, probably looking at his kids playing computer as uh, at, at at other people's house feel like uh in not intriguing but uh pity for his kids so he's bought one uh which is uh back then it was very expensive uh if i'm not mistaken my my dad took uh his uh epf uh which is uh kind of uh stuff uh what is it called i i, I don't know i i don't know i don't know in in other other term but i know i think you are you you guys uh uh, can figure out what is epf name or what is epf so he took out uh, some portion of epf because the government uh doing a sort of like uh one uh, one one computer per, uh, one one computer per house uh program so they are allowed to for those people to take it out as uh, a portion of money to get uh, to buy a computer and uh, to experience the computer itself in, uh, back in 1998 or 1997 or 99 between that, that uh, punya end of 90s. So yeah, my dad bought one uh, and uh, when I was that when uh, I think uh, if I'm not mistaken, at that time I was uh, in primary school. So yeah, uh, try to figure out where it is me, why I'm telling you this story. So uh back, back then it was a very privilege to get a computer not just computer it's a multimedia computer uh, kids do kids nowadays do know how really uh how really fun to get a multimedia computer you can hear music you can uh, do uh what is it called uh i don't say artwork but it's artwork because you got colors anything to uh do anything and then you can print it out so that's this multimedia that's that time that was the very fun of multimedia computer which is not everyone uh experience it so uh while i'm uh, jumping to my next slide i think uh try to figure out uh, which one is up here which one is me and if no i don't know what to give so there yeah, that's me so my first comp my very first computer was running a amd k6 this is the actual a uh, photo from the uh, from the computer but computer is already dead and uh, i've already uh uh piece it out so uh too bad but it's uh back in the days this is was the uh i think the, the the not cheaper but budget uh uh cpu computer cpu to be owned and to uh, to be as and you can see it's designed for windows na, windows uh, 98 yeah it's obviously it's obviously it's obviously state of, uh i'm using windows 98 over there so very this this processor was a killer uh i'm still an amd guy right now i'm my my, my computer is still running amd most of my computer is still running amd so hello blue <laughs> hello blue team uh but yeah amd is, is kind of fun back then and even today so uh my, this is actually my first computer but i still remember back in the days uh when when uh, i own when when i'm own when my family owned this computer uh i did uh i did what should i say i did investigate it uh, this is not the actual computer but you can figure out how I, I i doing the investigation with the computer so uh that is the start of how i'm really get into uh uh get really in into computer so uh from just only pulling up the ram stick and then pulling out the processor and then pulling out the motherboard until i don't know what to do and then uh, uh i have to uh, my 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 mother had to pass to someone to to come uh, to assemble it up again and then whenever when he uh, when the machine got back i got i i i reopened it but i'm just to make sure how uh how and where the electronics is should be assembled so yeah it's kind of a learning curve over there but uh, back in the days, uh, people are not really into uh, operating system because uh, 
as you know, Malaysia is uh, one of the the biggest con uh, biggest user of Windows, even today. So I think not today, but around the world. Uh, but still, to make it much more niche for for Malaysia itself, I think there, there's a lot of uh, Windows users still in Malaysia. So uh, we can we kind of stick with Windows ninety eight back then, Windows ninety eight. Uh, and yeah, it kind of uh, it kind of enjoy experience back then. Uh, kind of, I, I, I think I, I, I think I kind of uh, appreciate uh, from what I'm doing. Not appreciate. Uh, not I'm not saying that I'm appreciate uh, making stuff jumble up. No, but it's kind of appreciate that I've uh, try uh, to do those things. So yeah, uh, I think uh, uh, so. Uh, before uh, I think, I think uh, talking about open system. Uh, so we are going to the chapter two. So uh, when I say Windows ninety eight, uh, and then we jump to Windows XP. Back in days, we we uh, uh, we able to do a customization. We able to change our icon, which is we can still do now, but it's very limited. We can change our taskbar. We can do our docs. Our what what what, what should what should I say? What should I name? Uh, and I I I guess your whole desktop, your mouse, your uh, doc, your widget. If you still remember widget, and I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if, if if you remember widget, but there's a widget in Windows back then, kids. Is there any kids in there? In here? I'm not sure, but uh, I still remember back then. Uh, I have a lot of fun uh, customizing my uh, my Windows machine, even my splash screen. Uh, I can I can change my what bootloader screen uh, back in the days. So it's kind of uh, fun experience. But until uh, after the recent uh, Windows, I think Windows Seven. Uh, no, Windows Vista. <laughs> yeah, I thought you 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 are you are not expecting I'm talking about Vista right now. So when we when I'm going to Vista, uh, unfortunately Windows uh, uh, Windows uh, or Microsoft uh, 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 giving us a very limited uh, things to play around. I cannot change my uh, test bar color. I cannot change my uh, what is it? Oh, what is it called? Uh, I can touch my. Uh, I cannot uh, change my uh, out, uh, loading audio. I cannot change. I I I I. I, uh, I think I I cannot change most of what I can. What I can do in 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 the previous Windows. So it's kind of make me a uh, what should I say? Uh, very limited things to do. So one day. Uh, when I'm, uh, this is I think uh, back in 2007. Uh, that was uh, and I'm in uh, high school, which is already uh, almost finishing my high school. Uh, this at the time, at the time, uh, I found a, vi a video that uh, a video that keep playing, uh, showing that. Uh, you can do many things in uh, in 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 this uh, open system, which is I not figure out uh, at the time. I'm not really figure out. I thought it's what is it was XP back then. But uh, when I, when when I'm do my research, so end up I'm saw this. Uh, I, I I'm not sure if you guys uh, still remember this uh, compass. Uh, compass. I don't know compass fusion. Or, I think back then we got uh, two user i think i can be uh some things this is uh we call uh, this is i think compass config yeah it, it's stayed inside uh in in there but I, I'm, not, I'm not sure if you can see but i can see in my slide here but it's compass config uh settings so this is the file that i'm looking for back in this actually my first encounter with linux is uh when i was uh in primary school back then uh, i'm actually okay uh, to share with you guys malaysia have a very back then back then we have quite serious piracy uh, issue so you can try to 
uh, get uh, what is it called uh, any installer games uh, operating system even suites uh, in 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 a very cheap starting from five ringgit so I, i'm uh is that, can you uh can can you type in public check how five ringgit in usd i i i, I, don't, I i'm not sure back then but i think it's uh very much same uh apa ni, in today's currency but back then we if you if you want operating system you can get your operating you, you can get your operating system in five ringgit and how to get the cd key there's a cd key inside the cd so you can just generate the cd key any any key you want if you remember nowadays kids kids nowadays have no uh, challenge on our our time so uh i thought i buy a game back then uh it was uh written outside on on the cd it say red hat linux 7 if i not mistaken if i not mistaken but it's, it's version 7 before red hat was uh uh red hat, red hat linux enterprise so it's what it was red hat 7 or 5 if i'm not mistaken so i thought i i bought the cd i i thought i bought a game and then i tried to install in my computer but it's doing nothing and i kind i kind of uh, frustrated at the time uh so that's how i First, I'm encountered. I'm encountered with Linux. So uh, this is, I think, this is was uh, 2010. See, there's there's a big date. Uh, I, I don't. I, uh, yeah, there's a big date back there. So that was on Malaysia Open Source Conference 2010. So actually, this is uh, this piece. This machine is owned by uh Cairo uh, Isaac but I, I don't think he remember it, this is his PC you see it, it, there's a Windows Vista <laughs> icon down there so but he's obviously he loves I love Ubuntu yeah he is he loves Ubuntu so this is what intrigued me back then so uh, I'm start using Linux probably uh in 2009 or 2008 while I'm studying in uh while I'm studying diploma uh in in uh, in in kuantan which is just uh, uh east side of malaysia uh then uh i've met some few uh I, i've met a person that uh, taught me uh how to use linux not just in gui but in command line so she taught me a very 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 good basic uh, on how to experience linux from 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 ground up uh and then uh one day he asked me hey do you want to go uh, do, you, do, you, do you want to go for open source conference so i just like open source open source conference and then no no this is not actual uh, not the actual word but i'm just dramatized it a bit uh, so yeah he asking me to uh if i'm interested to go to the uh open source conference which is but it is i think we only need to pay 20 ringgit or 30 ringgit uh and plus we got a free t-shirt so yeah and not no I, I think i don't think we got free t-shirt but then because we got a different package because we got the uh cheapest one which is i bought because i'm student back then uh and then my friend bought the another ticket which come with the t-shirts so here's the photo of me uh i'm uh apologize for the pixelated version so this is post 08 uh i think post 08 i think can't remember the photo uh, seems um too old so uh this is uh, this is uh, my, my, my the friend uh the one who invited me to join him is uh the middle one uh, uh the person in, in the middle so he is the one who teach me a lot in uh, uh in, in 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 linux uh exclusively so uh while actually uh to make it clear why he teaching teach me uh he's not a lecturer but he's a te it technician which is i'm hanging a lot uh in uh, uh in my student student time uh, in my student time uh so while i'm uh while i'm uh hanging out over there 
he noticed me i'm 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 kind of uh not struggling but i'm kind of interested in linux so he showed me his main uh mandriva linux which is main rig main rig i not i don't think mandriva is uh ever ever i, th I don't think mandriva is here any longer uh but uh yeah he uh he he, he showed me the the mandriva and how he can do those role upgrade which is very very intriguing at the time because uh, i don't really like windows update that uh, uh, back then is one is slow big and fuzzy so back, back in the days linux was very uh, i can say it's very lightweight it's it's very handy and then you can upgrade anytime you want yeah, it's it's doesn't mean if you switch on your computer, you you must upgrade. No, you can you can delay it for I I I guess two or three days or maybe a month. I I I think my machine uh last time I I forget to upgrade it for for about six months, but you can still get the upgrade. So until until today, units have uh, not just not just not just make me easier but not lazier <laughs> but easier and uh why should i say the word uh easier and funnier no not funnier but uh uh i can we should stop at uh easier fine so uh i've been uh at this time i've Kind of like uh, enjoying uh, following any uh, fo following open source event. Uh, open source event. For, uh, for example, this is the first. I think this is the first uh, uh, event that I joined. This is not not really open source, but it's free open source uh, software. Com uh, 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 free open source software conference uh, KL. So it's for KL. Uh, I have blast event. Uh, I I I can say my experience at the time it was very blast. So I was thinking, uh, how if I what what if what if I uh I I I'm not really kind of like a technical guy that can do talk. Even I'm not really that technical to 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 join in some of the devel the development the developer part of the uh the conference because yeah uh, back in the days there's a lot of technical talk mysql uh what drupal uh, wordpress which is i'm lucky enough i know i i, I learned how to uh to deploy my wordpress until today which is very easy so i think you can uh, you can you can try to learn to uh build your first website not build not really build your first website but make your first website uh self posted website by yourself without uh hassle to learn any programming you can start with wordpress so uh, i was thinking uh what if i try to uh join the uh person uh, the, the community on the back for the conference and well i did so this is uh open source malaysia open source conference 2009 which is I act as uh, not really I'm not really a photographer, but I um, act as support photographer. But mainly my 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 uh, uh, back in this I think my uh, role was uh, trying to catch up uh, to catch all the speakers to be stay uh, to be waiting in the holding room. Uh, so yeah. Well, while I'm not, not doing anything, then uh, I'm just uh, hanging hanging by with with camera and then take take a look take a look take a look of photo. So yeah, uh, at this time I'm 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 I meet most of uh, open source uh, communities members like Isaac. I think this is the first time I'm, I I met Isaac because uh, back in days we uh, uh, before before I'm I'm uh, I'm active in open source. I'm much more active in uh, in Ubuntu community, so I uh, everything is in in IRC back then. Back then, so free not, yeah, which is still alive. Uh, you see, which is still alive till this day. Thanks a lot. Without without free not, I think I did. I I I I wouldn't communicate this uh, event. So.
Oh, Prino is not is is that? Oh, I have, seems to be I haven't <laughs> used IRC much these days. Oh, now Libra hmm, might be trying to uh, uh, try over uh, next time. So, uh, at this time, uh, I'm try to be not active, but I try to be involved in community, not just Ubuntu, but I think there's a lot of, um, back then, there's a lot of community, open SUSE, Debian, uh, free open, uh, open BSD, etc, etc. I cannot recall because it's, there's, there's too many of community back then because uh everyone want to everyone want to make community and everyone want to be uh want to be leader uh don't 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 take word on that eh? but yeah everyone everyone want to make a small community for themselves and every every everyone want want to join uh want to be niche in what they're doing so yeah uh there's a lot of community but i'm uh i'm i'm much more focused on ubuntu at the time and then and still enjoying uh with ubuntu local community in malaysia which is not not that big uh not that not that pura, not that uh, i said not that major compared with um back in 2017 or 2016 but we still have a, a we, we we still have more community to gather with to talk with to uh talk anything so uh, i i kind of kind, kind of enjoy uh and until some year until I, if i'm not mistaken until 2011 uh i was thinking so how long uh okay so again i uh, because i i'm 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 attending uh i think many many conference at the time not 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 this uh, as big as msc malaysia open source conference but a uh, small conference like meetup meetup and then workshop everything everything uh, every day at time so i'm i kind of like gaining uh some knowledge uh not just not that not not that advanced but uh some knowledge that i, I can I, I can share to other people so i was thinking hmm, why don't I, I i'm i'm do promotion on not not just promotion but i do talk with, uh, on 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 behalf of, of ubuntu uh, of ubuntu only because I'm, I'm using ubuntu but then so i think like i'm think like uh, the only that i'm really familiar but then uh still uh it's ubuntu but i'm uh i'm kubuntu user uh, uh nowadays so still ubuntu but i don't know i can just switch forward either gnome kde sfce anything don't care on, on uh don't care on, on, on the U, ui but i'm care in the system itself so i try to do talk this is i think i can't remember where this because this is so long but somewhere in 2011 uh, uh, at a very small event uh, uh, hosting a student uh, 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 I can't remember uh, students yeah I, I, I can confirm students but I cannot remember what students I'm uh, I'm sh I'm sharing with but I'm sharing on how Ubuntu is um, uh, is can uh, uh how they can learn to use ubuntu uh not in technical way but in how uh they can explore uh other systems so yeah i'm enjoying uh until uh starting from this day i've been enjoying uh talking so much so i'm doing talk and then another talk and then another talk and then another talk so yeah i'm enjoying doing i'm enjoying i'm i'm i'm, I'm enjoying doing talk not not say not not uh it's technically uh this is not true for your guys uh doing talks doing doing those those kind or this kind of talk uh doesn't um really need you to be a technical or to be a champion on a topic you can be a, uh, you can you, you can share anything you can share your thought and you can share your uh your 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 even though your your, your project is a very a very very idiot one a very simple one but you you want to share and probably you want you want you want to get feedback from other people then you should try it which is it's very very uh helpful because uh very this you can see on the right slide uh, on the right uh, photo right down uh i'm uh, actually uh that one is, is one of my project which is doing uh, uh traffic watch system 
uh yes i need gnome machine okay thank thank you for the reminder is so uh back to the stories so uh when i'm building this open source uh traffic watch system which is very simple system uh i got a very uh good feedback on how to improve uh, the, the project itself but unfortunately the project is not uh is not continued after 2000 16 so yeah i'm stuck with uh, i'm stuck with uh, i'm stuck with they start with what they are doing but i think they already upgrade the system so yeah uh close to them but yeah uh, it's a very enjoy uh very enjoy enjoy project because uh i'm doing the project from ground up not taking what is it uh what, i'm not talking any system or any solution put in my system and then just go on no this is from i think i i'm i'm combine i'm combining fmm tech uh and then push it using uh what is it called what is it called i can't remember i do fmm pack i i i um convert the the video feed from the from the cctv camera which is uh, uh at the roadside uh com, uh, com, uh convert it to image image send it uh rc yes the rc rc to another server which is uh hosted outside from the uh uh, uh from the external uh, uh, uh servers and people outside from the network can update uh, can see the updates on the traffic uh, uh, within five second interval so every five second the the image will be uh push update so it was a fun uh project that i'm i i've, I've done before uh but not just this uh talk i'm i'm also involved in like i said i'm 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 not really that i'm not really that uh, particular active but you can say i'm active passive but still i am still uh, enjoying being in the community so uh, in ubuntu community itself in in, in malaysia I, I i do have uh isaac do events like this party as example this is from to back in 2017 this is the last i think this is the last uh, event that we uh, we ever do in physical is it is, is that correct me wrong but i think this is the last one uh, so this is uh, uh, we do events uh, i do this is my design uh, because no one do, did any design back then so i said i said i said asked me to uh to uh to 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 create the design for for promotion for, for promotion use so yeah he asked me to do then this is uh, uh my final design which is not really that intrigued i, I apologize to all the designer in here because because there's two there's very much of you guys uh uh i, I guess designers so yeah sorry for that but this is not really that beautiful but uh i just Pa, 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 pa. Then, uh, yeah oh i i don't think it's uh tajul office it's uh 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 with uh, api nasdin api nasdin uh office so uh so that's how i'm um uh, how how the gospel actually the, the gospel the, the word gospel is actually the how open source uh how the uh, community the open source is uh being part of my uh part of my uh, activity in my life now so yeah uh i enjoy that so doing free things is nothing because free thing is nothing uh, literally nothing so you have to make money in in some of area because yeah uh you you, you cannot you cannot eat you cannot eat with uh without money you cannot eat without you cannot eat your uh you cannot eat either uh, your remotes your key your bed the base this battery this is not uh giving your energy at all so you have to to make money to get food and to eat and to get energy and to live that's the thing that's big that's the thing so uh uh to make it sh to, uh, to make short uh actually uh back then uh i i was studying 
for my diploma but i'm drop drop out uh, at back, uh, back in this so it's kind of hard uh, position to get a decent job back day uh, back then which is 2009 or 2010 so for a SPM holder uh, in Malaysia, we uh, we have uh, SPM Sijil Petra Malaysia, which is uh, and uh, I think equivalent to all uh, to uh, to all uh, not not all level is it O level uh, in the UK. So yeah, uh, I think uh, all uh, if you if you want to find a decent job with your SPM, uh, good luck or your all O level, good luck. So uh, kind of like. Uh, it's a it's a hard time for me to 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 get uh oh, what is it called to to be uh to be ready in a real world uh, situation. Well, this is real. The world is real, yeah. Okay, COVID is real, not that. So, uh, uh luckily when I was in when I was in my community, uh, I was able to show my uh my my abilities on how i'm handling i, I like i said i'm not really back back, day, back back in this i'm i have no qualification i have no nothing to show a, uh, anyone that i can do this that can do that uh, so inside the community that that time because i do uh session i do talk i do uh sh sharing session workshop uh back the days so some people uh, take uh, take note that I'm able to do uh, service job, which is really uh, I think it's really basic uh, in today's standard. So just as long as you can deploy it, you can make the server run. It's good, but, uh, because not everyone can do that. Even uh, back in days, uh, most of uh, uh, fresh grad cannot uh, cannot cannot understand how to to deploy a web server because they uh, because they are tend to uh, what is it called uh, i can say very uh, very um, dependent to if you can recall uh, smpp uh, so smpp is uh, not a uh, not a server so smpp is a, is a services but uh they don't know how to do uh, a proper server a proper web server so i'm back then i was the one who can who are who are able to do that without any certification yeah without any certification um uh, but then so kind of uh happy to be in the companies so this is one of my workstation back day back then uh so i'm started work with a uh, small company uh, doing uh, develop uh, uh, web programming something which is uh, a short term uh, three months something like that as uh, but i did get uh, the website up simple website but well as long as a website it's okay for them because uh, back in this wordpress website you just find uh, some tools some themes mix it up put it over you get a back uh, you, you can get a great website without any knowledge on uh programming and also i'm not i'm not a programmer yeah, until today i am not i i do not uh i i cannot code from ground up uh so yeah i'm kind of uh, uh i'm 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 technically a system a system, uh, a system person so i'm enjoying I'm, I'm enjoying uh doing uh system work but i can also do the uh, uh programming side of uh the work so yeah it's enjoy it, it, it's it, it's it's uh, enjoy it's kind of enjoy work but uh, after that uh, i got a, a sort of like kind of a big opportunity which is i'm working uh with a, an M, uh, a, a very big mnc company uh i think for malaysian uh if you heard high tech padu that is probably one of the biggest company it companies in malaysia so yes i uh, uh luckily i got uh, option to work there which is this is this is where uh i had office was but i was uh moving to another project which is called the oscc project so open source competency open source competency center 
So OICC is actually a, a, a center where a one stop center for open source within the government agency. So I'm dealing a very, uh, I, I'm dealing uh, plenty of project uh, while I'm there. Um, because of my uh, because of my primary role over there is uh, technical support, which is uh, just solving stuff or anything. But I'm not uh, level level one one, but I'm the, uh, the level two and the level three. So I can I can consider I'm the advanced user over there, other than uh, some um, I think most of my colleagues. So yeah, in technical uh, in technical support, I'm much more uh, in OCC. I'm much more doing supports in not just not just I mean, not just in system not just in server but also i do uh, maintaining some of the uh, the old programming works so if you can see here oh, yeah so uh, yeah i uh, sometimes i do php so even though i'm not the programmer but i can understand how php work uh, so one of the server i'm working uh, running zoop which is uh is a python uh python uh, framework so i do learn uh, i i i start understand python and i i do work on python while i'm in this project so i've, I've learned many things um uh, from my uh, from my very very humble uh, knowledge back then so i i think i give i have gained a lot i i've gained a lot in in the company so then uh, after after the project ended, I'm uh, I'm jumping to another company which is uh, also doing uh, this kind of uh, work uh, stuff uh, until uh, 2000, 2016 or 2015. Oh uh, no, uh, 2015 I think. Uh, I've uh, quit my job because uh, back day back in days. Uh, uh, that's what that was not did that that was not my last company. Uh, that what uh, that wasn't uh, this company. Ah, uh, see, uh, had that Padu Bahad. This is not not this company. This is this is what I proud my my proud uh, my kind of proud to join company. Uh, so I enjoy work, working working at this company. So uh, there's another company that I work, but uh, because due to there is a raise hand, Sukiman. Ah, uh, Sukiman. Wait lah, nanti lah. Wait, wait, wait eh, wait eh, wait eh, wait Sukiman eh. I, 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 I don't talk to me first. So, uh, I've enjoyed uh, my, uh, my, my experience uh, there. So, in 2015, I decided to, because, because after I'm shifting to other workplaces, uh, uh, after this company, uh, um, most of the work, I'm not really kind of, uh, prefer because I need to understand uh, Windows servers which is I'm not really keen of so I I I I I've enjoyed do open source stuff so yeah uh, uh, so I quit the, I, I I quit the company and then I'm I'm create my own company which is uh, as you can see data prodigy uh not a big company a small company uh which is focused on open source uh migration or uh, we we uh I, we are we are not change management company but we can uh partner up with our, our we have our partner doing change management but i'm on technical part doing those uh migration from probably proprietary or uh, other software to open source uh architecture so uh, this is how I'm creating my money. This is how I go. So, from gospel to go now to glory. So, what is the benefit? Is what is benefit from what is benefiting from my uh, I, I, I'm joining this com uh, those community? What can I do? Learn what can I improve myself? Uh, so. Actually, that, that actually that's that's the summarized. It's improving me. It's improving me from 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 I got nothing uh, when I when I was uh, when I was dropped out from college. Uh, now I can say I don't say I'm not really that I'm not I I, I don't say I I'm a very tech savvy guy. But for in open source, I can say that I'm I'm can handle 
uh, works from migrating from closed source to open source. Like recently, uh, I, I do projects uh, migrating um, uh, Exchange server, uh, Exchange mail server to uh, Zimbra. Zimbra is open source. Uh, open source. So, uh, so it's using open source tool. So it's considered open source. So, yeah. Uh, uh, I, mean, I, I, I can say I've, that's, that's my glory on doing uh, after, after all this uh, community, after all uh, I've, uh, I've joined into uh, the company that require my skill, which is they, I, 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 don't, I, do, I don't know uh, if they think I'm, uh, I'm helping them, but I think I in in personal reference I do help them in certain in, in certain in certain in certain aspect not just in server but uh, in uh, I think most of most most of their open source life uh, they uh, uh, when they have issue with their word processing I help I help them on migrating those uh, stuff uh, I guess it's fun it's it, it's it, it's a fun things to uh to to get so to summarize uh, i think make to make it summarize this is what my glory knowledge you cannot get you cannot gain knowledge uh openly uh if you are if you are in uh other com uh other community not 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 mean that if you are in windows community you you, you are not getting the uh uh the knowledge no but it's more accessible in uh, in open source world. Uh, why? Like I said, I'm not a programmer, but I can understand. I can do. I can uh, edit a simple uh, programming, uh, simple uh, uh, PHP programming. Uh, I do maintain Zimbra, which is Zimbra. Most of them are Java, but I can understand, uh, understand Java because I can learn from the code itself, not and just learning from the surface. You know, like the UI, like for example, uh, back then when I was using uh, GNOME, uh, I still use GNOME, sorry. <laughs> I still use GNOME uh, in my another machine, but uh, primarily I'm using KDE, but everything is just the same. Don't worry. But back then, my first love was my first uh, UI in, in, in uh, open source was, uh, was, uh, was GNOME. So I did learn how the the uh the gnome uh, icon works where should i edit this uh text also i do uh involve in uh translation so it's kind of intrigued how really beautiful your language in in the same time uh while you are doing the uh, the translation so yeah open society like this uh i think you can read uh by your own so it's not just it's not just it's not just uh changing uh changing your perspective not not just changing your work but changing everything in in i, I can say in in how you, how you decide things so yeah and yeah rather than we being just uh talking uh like a quick and uh like up your duck and chicken all the time because when officers say when this uh uh Gnome say this, KD say this, uh, what else, uh, uh, others, uh, uh, UI say this. Uh, we, we do have uh, our own language, but the beauty of open source is, is we are sharing all the language. So it's not, it's, it's, not, it's not restricted to, if you're using Ubuntu, then you are stick with Ubuntu. If you're Windows, yes, but if you're using Ubuntu, you're, you are just embracing all the others uh, flavors. So uh, back in this, we have this robots, but when I, when I understand the true meaning of, of on open source itself, it's really uh, it's really open. It, it's really open to me. So while while mean by knowledge, so that's why I, I I'm I'm really open to share my knowledge, like I share on my earlier slides. So yeah, share your knowledge. Don't keep it. Don't keep it uh, uh, unless it's uh, confidential. And uh, that one, don't, 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 don't ever share your knowledge. Uh. So, but the true beauty is open source. 
is the community. So community is the I think the only reason why we cannot move from uh, this open source uh, experience is the community because from start event I'm enjoying doing hackathon. I'm doing uh, I, I'm enjoying uh, uh, knowing new guys uh, which is have same not just uh, not in only just have same passion uh, not not passion passion same passion but uh, uh, same understanding on 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 how we want to make it work on how we can uh, make it interesting so there's a lot of communities i i i, I don't know uh, I, I i i i can't thank I, I i i think i can i cannot thanks anyone other this uh, i think these people in this photo uh, uh if you, if you, uh, i think i think if you are in here then uh I, i'm really thank thank you guys but don't don't open your not to mention also uh the the Gnome community uh, members which is uh, also help uh, me to uh, not uh, help me helping uh, Isaac helping uh, uh, us the local team on this uh, event it's really helpful so the community is the beauty of the open source itself you if you ask me uh, another thing that make me what should I say uh, another, another thing that uh, really make me for uh, actually changing it, it, uh what really changed my life with open source is uh back in uh, last five years actually this is uh just a life story uh i been diagnosed with uh, my uh, lymphoma cancer so i i'm 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 i'm, I'm a cancer patient so uh it's uh it's kind of it's kind of like a uh, very it's it's a deja vu when I having my uh, when I drop out from my college. I'm kind of like blur, dark. I don't know what I don't know I don't know what to do and I don't know what way to go. But uh, how how open source is affecting me? This is because the knowledge. Because back in the days uh, when I was in what uh, so that's just me. I, I I'm not that miserable, but I'm just woke up and this friend uh, all my friend just came visiting me so uh, uh, just uh, yeah so uh, open source is not just uh, teaching me just uh, uh, new information technical anything but it's changed my mindset from when i when i first uh, being diagnosed with cancer i start do uh, do uh, learn on what my disease are so if you i think i think if you, if you are not in if you are not in in those kind of mentality probably you still in a really bad bad situation you don't know what to do i i i have some situation where uh, one of the patient have uh kind of like uh, very down um mentally me mentally down mentally down so because they don't they they just like I say, if every if, if someone heard about cancer, it's a uh, end for them, but it's not. So that's how knowledge teach me. Uh, how can I? Uh, how can I change everything? This. Uh, 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 let me finish because this is just uh, end of the, my slides. So while I'm having this, I'm meet another new people. Which is a very fun experience. No, it, it, like I, I know it's it's not an open source thing. It's not technical thing. But you are sharing your knowledge. You are sharing what you know. You are sharing uh, your passion on fighting what you are doing. So I'm fighting for my. Uh, I'm uh, uh, fighting with my cancer, and uh, I think I'm I'm five years already off from chemo or any 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 kind of therapy. So, uh, alhamdulillah. And so I want to share my passion on uh, fighting cancer to all people here, not just not just in not just not just in technical, not just in the uh, uh, in cancer uh, in, in in this cancer cancer world, but in all uh, respective uh, uh, side of the world, because cancer is not uh, a, a ticket 
for your death. It's just another uh, paradigm for you to explore. So uh, this guy, the, the guy in in uh, uh, that I'm uh, taking photo on the left, uh, this is technical guy. So he is the one who really uh, uh, do talks me, do talks uh, very often with me because we have same background. We uh, we are not lymphoma, but we have cancers. Uh, we do technical. He is do programming. I do system. So we just love to mumble jumble every time. Every time we meet. And another experience I can enjoy, uh, the glory that I enjoy, I made very, like I said, community is one thing that the most very, very valuable in open source world. So I've met uh, uh, Mr. Uh, uh, who is it again, Isaac? Uh, Shuttleworth. Yes, yeah, Smart Shuttleworth. There's the center. Uh, so see, Isaac over there. So, it's very enjoyable community. I've learned, I've met, I've met the one who uh, introduced my very first operating system. And also I've met the father of open source, not open source, but free software itself, uh, Richard Salmon. Uh, so Richard Salmon, I've, I've met, I've met him. So don't try to me. Don't twist it. Don't, don't twist my word. <laughs> so uh, to end this, uh, I've, have three word mantra uh, that I I'm still following since I'm uh, I'm uh, I'm 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 uh, I'm already in the community. So actually, the person is uh, the, the the person who is uh, show me this word is uh, Red One, which is this, uh, the guy in the middle. Uh, he taught me these three words. So information is free. You have to know. You have to know because information is free. You can Google it, you can duck, duck, go it, you can uh, uh, MSN live it, uh, anything search engine, you can go to library. Information is free. You have to know. That's why, that's why open source is really beautiful. But people are not. You have to pay. So that's how mm -hmm. I get my pay. So people are, I got my knowledge. I got my, I got my knowledge. I got my, I got, I got everything that I, 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 I consume, and I deliver. So people have to pay me. I, it, it doesn't mean people have to pay me everything, but some of the works they have to pay. So people have to pay. But this is the last, the strongest, the strongest. I think the strongest, uh, the strongest word that I think that makes me why the reason i joined community and why i uh, joined uh, genome uh, foundation to make uh, uh, genome action summit this year and last year to make it happen although it's not physically in malaysia because this last word oh sorry this last word contributor are priceless you have to be All right so i think i've already i've already overrun 10 minutes over uh from the original uh, from the original uh time so uh thank you guys uh, uh so is there any question is that i think we, i got question got questions i think no because i think uh we need to close our two days event and can everyone on who are still in the room open up your camera at least we can see each other's and we would like to close our two days event. Christy, Sammy, you there? I think Hello, come uh, on. Sukima, Sukima wants to ask just now, right? He, uh, he or she raised his hand. Uh, just a moment. Just a moment. I think he. I, I think she's handling his, uh, her baby. <laughs> so, uh, Christy, Christy. Oh, Christy. Huh? Yeah, there she goes. Today, Hi. today no baby. Today no baby. No, my cousins. <laughs> <Today. left. laughs> yeah. I don't have any babies. My cousins are. Sammy, are you there, Daniel? Yongbin, are you there, your main mind to open your camera, Sunil?
So uh, any last word from I think uh, Christy? as a representative from uh, Genome Foundation for our two days event? I think that the event went uh, beyond my expectations. I'm super happy that this happened. And overall, it was, a, it was a very great experience that I had. I would really, really like and love to thank the local team and the organizing team. They have done an amazing job. So if we were in person, it have been a very, very, very Big clap for you, Fenris, for you, Sazon, and yep. Sami, who has helped, and everyone else that uh, has helped for this conference to uh, to happen. And I really hope to see you on 2022nd in Kuala Lumpur, probably in Malaysia, so we can have it in person. Yeah, yep. so we also need to... Uh need to know right the next country will submit the papers we're going to the host for next coming years right for the next years and yeah so for 2022nd uh, we want to have this event in malaysia and ah. for 2023rd we'll oh, thank, you, thank you i thought i thought i thought we already uh yeah i mean given us opportunity for the those last year and this year two years so yeah we need to work hard as well for the next year hoping it going to no be worries. no worries no worries if you can make it it's completely fine if you cannot uh, make it to organize it in person just let us know and we'll be able to yeah. Yeah. manage we are it. most welcome so because i just i just thought that uh yeah other country may submit their their papers as well to, to host the genome summit but yeah we are most uh interested to 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 host the it, next event i i think i i think it's very generous for you know foundation to keep us to be a physical <laughs> for at least a year for at least one time so it's very it's very generous hey, three three years in three years in the row is it yeah it's hat trick <laughs> um by the way uh, uh well kamal is on the camera now so kamal as one of uh, i think participant also speakers uh, you a, anything to add up before we wrap, wrap up the event okay i don't have much to say but thank you for inviting a very nice event there's a couple of things that uh i got to know through this i think maybe i wrote uh, some uh blog post to summarize this letter maybe thank you, thank you. for this yeah that's all thank you guys semi so is that oh semi is semi here daniel are you here daniel can we uh, just open our here, camera yeah. or screenshot I want to take uh, by the way is, that, is there any 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 last uh, any any word well uh, for this year event so, uh, i think my last word actually i would like to thanks to the uh, local community team <laughs> me like like uh, and the foundation i need to speak up the name mostly christy semi and some of our other our friends neighbor friends in indonesia haris rania and i uh, mean uh, in some meetings uh, oliver thank you as well and joining are giving some feedbacks and of course Azwan, Emira and some of other uh, cannot participate these two events and I would like to thanks to all the speakers and I would like to apologize if any wrongdoings or any uh, wrongly uh, moder moderating the event so the that was is on our weaknesses it's not on the organizations and thank you to our sponsors and i'm hoping that we will meet uh, face to face next year in the endemic world so i'm not sure hoping the borders and, and all the countries are open and uh and malaysia so i'm i'm it really encouraged me for hosting the physical event but it subjects to our country is that the border is open to all countries or certain certain uh, uh, limit to certain countries. So thank you very much, uh, Christy. I think you, without you, I think uh, we are so nothing. <laughs> okay. Yep, it's not possible. <laughs> okay.
Okay, thanks. Yeah. I think, uh, Thank you yeah. so much. Thank you. That's all from yeah. uh, me as a representative uh, rep for Malaysia and hoping, yeah, uh, hope to see you guys again in the next coming Genome Access Summit. Either Malaysia will be the host or other our neighbor country will be the host. So as Sazwan said, actually it's very uh, sad story. This is like like uh, memory lanes. I mean like Prof Swami given his memory lane. And Chazwan also give a memory lane. So, yeah, I mean, actually, genome is uh, current and future, yeah, being a part of current and future memory lane. Yep. Yeah, agree. Yeah, because, because for, me, for me, for me, for me, for me, to making it, to keep making this kind of event uh, annually is not really a, 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 a easy job because you need to find. Not not just not just uh, money is one things, but to gain uh, to gain uh, exposure to create uh, to create uh, to create uh, sort of like uh, 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 what is what what was what, what's the word uh, to create such of impression to other people, which is it's hard to it's 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 really hard work. It's not really an easy work to do uh, overnight. Uh, Daniel, is there any last word? I I just I I just happy to uh, you open your you open your, your your camera, but mind to say any words, Daniel? Hmm. I think I think he's he's refreshing his uh, browser, but yeah. Uh, well, uh, I I guess this is I I guess this is the end. Is that I'm not doing the I'm not doing the wrong job. You only you the one wrong. I'm okay. <laughs> So, uh, okay. Ah, yeah, Daniel is back. Daniel is back. Yeah. So, Daniel. So, uh, actually, no, actually, uh, uh, I I forgot to mention to you. Uh, last time, I'm I want to make a note. You you should be you should be a radio a radio DJ. You have a very good voice. Uh, yeah. you have a very kind of uh, intrigue uh, voice tone. So, it's interesting. Yeah, uh, can you hear me? I want to thank yeah. all the people who get this possible. I know this, uh, you must to really understand that. So I want to appreciate all the people, you know, it's, it's part of what we want, what we love. So I want to thanks. And this is not the first time, the last time this is going to make many years. So I really hope to see you, not online, I hope, <laughs> but I hope to see you very soon in the WADE, whatever, whatever, you know, there are many kinds of process. So I hope to see you next year. Um, I would like to be a present in the next WADEX. It's going to be in Mexico, I hope so. So I'm going to be there. So I hope to see you, any, guy, any guys here, there. You know? So I hope really okay. hope there. And thank you very much. Thank you, thank you very much. And I understand that is really hard process to do. Uh, so I want to say thank you very much. Thank, thank you to you too, Daniel, for your time to uh, to, to be one of the uh, one of our speakers and share your experience in this in design team uh, in you know itself. No, thank you, thank you very much for giving me the opportunity. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Daniel. Thank you, Kamal. Is, is there any uh, anything to up uh, to wrap up to wrap up to wrap up? Okay, I think uh, the I mean just to to recap back the t-shirts uh, will be available or uh, to online, and then the uh, we will send to the speakers uh, the t-shirts uh, as we are in the process of uh, producing it. So hopefully uh, there's a, a token from the uh, foundations uh, as uh, to be. Uh, among our speakers for our conference and like uh, Daniel said, hoping that we can meet in person either in Godak or the next uh, Genome Access Summit. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you everyone. Have a good evening and good afternoon. Yep. Okay. Uh, from, from my side, terima kasih, which is in, Mal in Malaysia, we say terima kasih, thank you. So hopefully to join you guys uh, physically uh, next year. Okay, thank you. Bye. Bye guys, thank you. Bye. Thank you very much.